All right, good evening. One, two. Now I'd like to bring the regular evening meeting of Township Alignee Council to order. Just wait for members of council to take their seats. All right, the first item uh, on the agenda is uh, adoption and receipt of the agenda items. So it's one addition, that's uh, D4, would be a delegation from uh, Ms. Remenick. Could I motion by Councillor Ferguson, seconder. Councillor Arneson, uh, all those in favor, opposed and carried. Next, I need a motion to adopt the minutes of the regular evening meeting of November 4th and the public hearing of November the 4th. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Kuntz, seconder. Councillor Long, any errors or omissions? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. Thank you. Uh, there are no presentations. We do have four delegations. We'll start with Mr. Mitch Gillis. And uh, just to remind all the delegations that uh, your time limit is five minutes, and you'll see the uh, the light will flash and then go solid red when your five minutes is up. So, And if you have your name and neighborhood where you live, that would be helpful. Thank you. Is Mr. Mitch Gillis here? Oh, well, come on up. Come on. Come on forward to the podium. And... Uh, there we go. So I'll put your mic on. Just give us your name for the record, and uh, then I'll start the timer after that. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Mitch Gillis, and I reside at 240th and 56, a corner lot in the township of Langley. The address, to be exact, is 5592 240 Street. My wife and I are relatively newcomers moving from Ladner to Langley at our present address. When purchasing our present property, we were not aware of the past council's decision to designate 56th Avenue as a truck and or highway route into Langley. However, be that as it may, these two streets and avenues have become shortcuts and bypasses into the back door in Langley. On every rush hour morning and evening, there are crashes between 264 and 232 on Highway 1. This increases and doubles traffic on our 56th Avenue. We have on several occasions waited up to 15 minutes to get out of our own driveway because of the heavy lineups and that's on our corner. We have this past three years encountered about three crashes a month of which several have been serious. The drivers along this route have become very impatient and very agitated with the gridlock encountered on this corner. Be advised that the average speed ends up being 80 kilometers an hour in a 50 kilometer hour zone, especially at rush hour. Around our property, we have a chain link fence with gates, entrances on both sides. These fences and gates have been run into and damaged several times by unruly drivers. And recently, a driver under the influence of drugs or booze, unknown, did several figure eights on the grassland area and hitting our fence and damaged the same. The only satisfaction we have out of this was it was a Volkswagen vehicle and he left a lot of parts behind and trim parts and glass. It was reported to the RCMP, which is on file. Shortly thereafter, we had a visit by Langley Works Yard at our request to shift some concrete road barriers that had been left by the previous owners prior to our arrival some time ago. We were informed they would be removed, not replaced. They returned a few days later and installed five plastic barriers as a deterrent for drivers trying to do a two-lane right-hand turn, especially on this corner. And uh, they put in five of the posts and screwed them to the, dry, uh, the roadway. And they were outside of our chain link fence. There is a patch of grass area, which I understand is city turf. I take it upon myself to maintain this stretch of grass myself there are many people who pull up on this grass area for cell phone use and be trained truck drivers, dump trucks, etc. 
for whatever use. In the wet season, they have to spin out and they chew their way out, leaving behind a mud mess for which I have to maintain and repair daily, or weekly, pardon me. During the installation of the five plastic markers, I had a conversation with a supervisor of roadworks about our problems and encounters. I requested more markers along this roadway and was turned down as to his limits. I was also advised I could do what I wanted to mark the area off, but to be sure that what I installed was clearly visible to the, pub, to the drivers. My final straw came when I was mowing the grass area on the pictures, if, if you have them with you, uh, in, in evidence, when a pickup truck came up from behind me, blew his horn, swore at me for being in the way. He was driving down the grassland area and wanted to make a right-hand turn to try to avoid the long lineup. And uh, we got into a confrontation over it. He was driving down between the fence and the grasslands and the stop sign. It was then I decided something had to be done, and I installed the perimeter markers as pictured. During the time of installation, there was an average of four or five Langley Municipal vehicles going past every day, at which time I got smiles, nods, and approval of my installation, and no one objected to this at any time or gave me any advice whatsoever. You just have to wrap up your time. Your five minutes is up. I'm Sir, sorry? Your five minutes is up. If you could just wrap up, please. Okay. And you can leave that with the clerk um, also. What I'm requesting, ladies and gentlemen, is a trial period to leave this as it is. And uh, I've installed this, but I got a letter, which you may have a copy of, from a Mr. Thomas Farmer. He is one of your municipal engineering technologists. And... I was given a time period, I believe it was November 8th, to have this removed. And I told him I was coming here, I had a mess meeting with him, but it didn't work out. Today at 2 o'clock I got another letter, at the, today, and it's dated November 12th, but I just received it in the mail today from Mr. Thomas. I am given four days to remove these ties and these markers from this area, or I will be receiving a $150 per day fine. What I'm asking for is a trial period to see if this cannot be left as it is, or solid instructions to have them removed. I don't know if I can complete this in the time frame I've been given, but that is its may. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. Just before we go, so just to clarify, you would like an extension to have those removed, and how long an extension would you be requiring? I'm sorry? You, you would like to have more time. It sounds to me like you'd like to have more time. Uh, and have those weather removed. permitting, How much time I could say take? that I could not comply with the order I received today. If we're giving a week or 10 days, I think I can comply with that, yes. Okay, thank you for that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next delegation uh, is Christy Jato. Please come forward. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Davis, I'm sorry. <clears> the intent question. was. Uh, oh, he's gone. <laughs> okay. I just wonder if I don't think I think um, okay. he wanted Sorry. maybe to see if it was a trial. That's right. Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard that too. Yeah. So we got both. So that maybe was, another business. That, or, that's okay. Right. Okay. Sorry Thanks. about that. Thanks. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome here. Thank you. Good evening, honourable mayor and councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, tonight, uh, my name is Christy Juteau. I live at uh, 1620-192 Street in Surrey. Um, but tonight I'm representing the, the Little Campbell Watershed Society, which stretches across South Langley and South Surrey. Oh, my slides are moving automatically. Um, so I'm going to be speaking about a motion that's to be discussed later this evening uh, for Langley to to pursue a biodiversity conservation strategy across the township. So myself uh, and the salamander and 
the Watershed Society, our Watershed Society, but other watershed societies across Langley as well, as a number of residents that I've spoken with support uh, the Langley Township taking on a biodiversity conservation strategy. So why do we care? All of us need biodiversity, so the diversity of living things in order to survive. We need, we rely on clean water to drink, clean air to breathe, r flowing rivers for fish. Uh, we need healthy pollinators for productive fruit crops, uh, not to mention our mental health and enjoyment of life. So uh, a biodiversity conservation strategy would take a look at where all the all the hubs of diversity are across the township and would map those out and identify um, which areas are important to conserve and protect and enable more intentional protection. Uh, this isn't a new idea. Uh, it's been done in the Okanagan. Uh, Metro Vancouver took on a biodiversity conservation strategy. Surrey has one. Uh, Vancouver has one as well. Uh, so it's not a new idea. This is a map out of Metro Vancouver's biodiversity strategy that was done in 2008. And you can see in the map, south of the Fraser, Langley Township is, has probably the most green, which is the, the relative biodiversity showing uh, the green places. So in 2008, um, and still today, Langley has this opportunity to protect diversity across Metro Vancouver. Um, a study that was done by a Trinity Western student looking at land use transformation across time, we know that um, more and more, as population increases, more and more um, land is developed. And from the 50s to just a few years ago, we lost about 25% of our forest cover across, this is the Little Campbell watershed, so half of that is Langley, half that Surrey. But, uh, you can see the rapid rate at which we're losing forests, which are one of the greatest centers of diversity. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, we're losing forests at a rate. So the best time to protect trees, of course, was uh, 60 years ago. Um, the second best time is today. Uh, so I just want to say that I just want to encourage the township to, to consider seriously taking this this on. And I was also encouraged to see Langley has showcased um, the use of rain gardens and water management, integrating that into development practices. Um, and that there was this, they hosted an event in 2007 to, to showcase the ways that we're integrating um, conservation of land with development. And I want to encourage Langley to continue on that track um, and just acknowledge that more is needed uh, in order to position Langley well in this season of pressure as more and more people are moving in to Langley and also uh, to fully live into our sustainability charter. Um, so thank you, my children and I thank you for considering this important action. Thank you, Councillor Arneson has a question. Councillor Arneson. Um, thank you very much for bringing this forward. Um, in terms of just presenting graphically uh, these beautiful pictures of wildlife and creatures and yourself and your children, I just wanted, um, if you could, you know, I, I think one of the things that maybe people don't think about, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but the idea that in protecting biodiversity that you actually create a quality of life for people that are moving here. So if there's something you could just say about that. Yeah, I mean, most of the people I talk to in our neighborhood are living there because it's so green and natural. And the, I mean, I'm privileged enough to live in a place that, that has the river running through it and has forests to walk through. And there are studies that show um, that your health increases as the amount of time that you're, you're in natural space. And I think we can all attest to times uh, just being thankful for being in natural places to rejuvenate us and give us rest. So absolutely. Thank you. Councilor Kunst. Yes, thank you for your presentation. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for the um, tour that you gave us a few weeks ago and I learned a lot about um, the work that you guys are doing and um, yeah I just really appreciate all the, uh, the efforts of this society so thank you for your presentation. Thank you.
All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, the next uh, delegation is uh, Mr. Glenn McKinnon. Good evening. May I begin? Yep. My name is Glenn McKinnon. I live at 24367 60th Avenue uh, in Langley. Uh, I am here to, the purpose of my presentation tonight is to, uh, as a resident of Langley for 30 years, I recently made application for uh, tree removal to the township of Langley. I understand there was a new bylaw, which was a surprise to me. Um, and uh, so I uh, was very, very surprised by the uh, nature of the fee that is now part of the new bylaw regulations. The purpose of my presentation today is to request a variance to the township permit fee uh, for tree removal on my property. In, in the information package I uh, um, passed for your uh, consideration, you will see a copy of my presentation and two maps that show the number and location of trees on my property, and also a photocopy from a Langley uh, Township document, which is called Langley By Building Bylaw. It's a consolidation of all the building fees that Langley um, uses in its uh, building department. I will be referring to that as I make my presentation. My wife and I uh, have lived on our one acre property for 30 years. It's heavily treed with approximately half the property left to forest. Over the last uh, uh, 25, 30 years, a number of trees that were small. Uh, as life goes on, you forget to look up, and over time we have found ourselves in a one-acre property with two 70-foot walls on each, uh, both the east and west side of our property. And shade is now at a premium, um, and uh, not a lot of sunlight hits the property directly. So we want, wish to remove some trees. Um, on our lot, we have a total of 127 trees on our property, including those that I want to remove. The number of trees I wish to remove is 17 trees. Uh, these 17 trees represent 13% of the trees on my property. Um, I'm retaining 110 trees in the back section, which is uh, heavily forested. I think this fact demonstrates that I am not taking a clear-cutting approach to the, uh, to the property. I've received estimates for this work from tree removal companies ranging from six to seven thousand dollars for removal. My intention, as the bylaw states, is to replace trees, and that is my intention uh, to replace trees along the uh, the property lines, but with smaller growing trees, so that we can retain some sunlight to the property. I intend to plant uh, uh, one hundred uh, tall hedging trees and. Uh, six to eight mid-sized trees of 20 to 30 feet down both property lines. And uh, this represents a ratio of five to one, five replacement trees to one tree removed, which far exceeds the, um, the um, guidelines of the bylaw. My concern is that newly passed Langley Township Tree Protection Bylaw imposes excessive, restrictive, and punitive fees to residents when applying for removal of several trees. While the permit fee of $100 per tree may seem reasonable when it's applied to the removal of one tree, when you take the multiplier effect of 17 trees, that permit fee becomes $1,700. I believe that is wildly exorbitant, excessive, and punitive to the landowner. Um, in uh, the, uh, this permit fee actually represents 30% uh, of the cost of, of my tree removal. And to give that a sense of scale, I refer to this document here, which is the consolidated fees by the building department. And in this guideline, I've quoted you in my notes, um, the standard uh, valuation schedule for a basic building project is $50 per $1,000 of valuation. So on a project of $10,000, you would have $50 plus $10 on each additional $1,000. So the permit fee on a $10,000 project would be $150. I'm being charged a permit fee of $1,700 to $1,800 for a project the township has little or no inspection obligations. I believe this is an excessive, uh, it's unfair, 
and could be viewed as an easy cash grab. Firstly, I am not a developer with big pockets or a massive million dollar project to absorb these large fees. For the private homeowner, these fees are excessive and unreasonable. Secondly, these excessive permit fees also restrict my ability to afford the significant cost of replacement of trees. In my case, the cost to purchase replacement trees will be approximately $5,000. So I'm already at $12,000 to remove the trees and replace the trees. And as I would remind you, I've committed to replacing the trees at a 5 to 1 ratio, far exceeding the bylaw guidelines. Wrap up your five minutes. Is, In my clear. case, the permit fee is excessive. What my, I am asking is that the council provide a variance to my application by setting a reasonable cap in order that I can meet the financial challenges of removal and replacement costs. I suggest a fee that is leaked, linked to project valuations and aligns with other permit fees levied by the township. While I appreciate the Langley Township spirit of protecting trees, I believe the township has failed to fully consider the negative economic consequences the bylaw has on Langley residents like myself who are already doing their part to protect trees, are acting responsibly, and are committed to replacing trees they remove. I appreciate your consideration of my request and look forward to your response so that I may proceed with my project. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ferguson has a question. Councillor Ferguson. And for coming, I wanted to ask you, you've been there on the property for 30 years? Correct. Okay. Now, and uh, since you've been there a while, are there any of these trees that you've had a chance to discuss with? Well, first question, have you discussed this particular issue with their staff? I've discussed this issue with uh, uh, Eric Fong from the Urban Forestry Department of the Township. And did he give you any options, or he just was the option to come just to just to council? Yes, he understood that there was no um, uh, uh, um, jurisdiction within his department to to administer the fees up or down. Um, he and I, as we were talking, he was on his computer and looking at a Google view of my lot, and and readily admitted I was heavily forested lot. Um, but he suggested that my um, my remedy would need to come from council or some guidelines from council to staff. Now, Mr. Pickett, I realize that the, the tree bylaw is fairly new for township wide. Yes. It's been available in Brookswood for a while. But I wanted to know under dangerous trees, sometimes, I don't know if she had a chance to discuss that with staff, sometimes they give a little bit of option regarding dangerous trees or trees on road. Was it that discussed at all? Um, uh, with Eric, uh, no, but uh, I had intended to include that, but got an, a, a warning from the mayor that uh, my time was being, and so you will see in your package that I did, I do have a few trees that uh, fall into that category, but still, if those were accepted uh, or made the exception, I still might face a, a fee of uh, twelve to fourteen hundred dollars, which I believe is excessive. This bylaw is new, and I understand that sometimes uh, when um, new enactments come in or we we take new directions, we don't necessarily foresee all the implications. And I believe this bylaw, um, while it was well intentioned, and I don't disagree with the the overall intentions of the bylaw. Um, um, a look at my property would show that um, while I might not um, proudly wear the term tree hugger, uh, my wife probably would. Um, and uh, um, we are, I believe, doing our part to protect trees and keep our, our urban area forested or our semi-rural area forested. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank All right. Next uh, delegation is Ms. Anna Remenick. I do have a PowerPoint I'd like to plug in. Is there someone who could? Think so. I don't see it popping up. Am I missing it? I just want my own laptop. One, two, 
Sorry for the delay. Thank you for having me here tonight, Mayor and Council. I'm Anna Remenick. I live in Murrayville, and I'm here to talk about our water situation. And I know you've already met about this earlier this uh, afternoon, and you've discussed it, and you've done some measures, which are fabulous. But I still think it's important to bring to everyone's attention what it is that we've been dealing with for at least approximately two years now. I know that the staff report says September 2019. However, the Murrayville community page does have issues that go back farther than that, and the uh, members have posted there. Um, how do I make this go to the next one? Arrow. Arrow? Thank you. Oh. I work on a Mac. These PCs are a little bit... Arrow. Okay. Sorry, there we go. So... Um, I want to thank the staff for the report, and I want to thank you for turning off well number 10 in Brookswood, which was over the Health Canada limits for manganese, and uh, denoting that there are a number of wells that are approaching the max limits as well, and that all of them exceed the uh, aesthetic values which were assigned by Health Canada in May 2019. Um, I want to also uh, thank Council for moving forward with some of the really important steps that uh, needed to be taken for us, and I understand that you will be transitioning us to, oh darn it, uh, straight GW, GVWD water for the time being. Um, this is the kind of stuff that we had coming out of our taps on a regular basis, and I've actually come with a bottle today that was collected this morning. And we've all been told that we need to be flushing our taps, and we've had one of your senior water systems People telling us all sorts of things that don't actually jive with the reports I've been reading. And so I'm wondering whose idea it was for him to join the Murrayville community page. And if anybody was actually checking what was being posted for validity against the reports. Or if he had read them because there are some contrasting information in there. Um, the cost of the Murrayville residents so far, this is an example of a strata meeting where they were discussing up to 10000 from their contingency reserve fund to put in water filters to deal with that water. Um, this is 24 hours after a water filter was installed. This is every 30 minutes, or every five minutes for 30 minutes, the last one being there. So when we're told to run our water for 30 minutes, imagine the amount of water that we're wasting in doing that. And those are just some things. So now here we are to manganese toxicity, the fact that it really affects younger kids, and the impact that it has depends very greatly on exact individual medical conditions. So what may not be toxic and extremely bad for one person could be far worse for somebody else. Um, the children are most susceptible because they accumulate higher levels of manganese and eliminate less than adults do. And these toxic exposures tend to impact academic performance and biochemical processes, reduced IQ, and attention deficits. These are some other medical issues that come with manganese, and I'm not going to get into them too terribly much because you can certainly look at this afterwards. I'm wondering about the positioning of Well 10 to what's happening across the border in the industrial park in Surrey. And have we looked at whether those concentrations rose with the development? Um, and have those MAC limits always been reached at that well? How long has it been that case? Has the paving over the major, major recharge area in Surrey impacted us and led to higher levels of concentrations for minerals? And is there a legal mechanism for us to recover costs from their municipality if they negatively impact our water supply? Um, it appears that the estimate in the staff report is a little bit low for the cost of that GVWD water because it's basing it on 2018 figures for water drawn, but by that point we will have more people living in that area and drawing from it. Um, so I'm really glad that you've done all of these things, that you've taken into consideration all of our um, 
concerns there and the medical aspects that come with that, but we really need to actively implement and require measures to protect our groundwater and set regeneration targets. Um, we need to look at the treatment options because there's not enough water in our GVWD agreement to meet the needs of projected development and population growth in Brookswood and Fernridge. And we also need to look at a full development impact study on the recharge levels in Brookswood, Aldergrove, Willoughby, and all current and future development permit areas. The university district must go through the same planning and approval process as everyone else. And I think it's really imperative because we're here today talking about this water because of the depletion over the years that has been occurring because of our use and because of the development that's occurred over top of it. So that's generally what I'm looking for. And one of the comments from the water fellow was that um, the developers had been uh, moving all of this stuff around, and part of it was due to the development that was going on up the hill. So are we recovering the cost from the developers for main flushing and that kind of thing when we have adverse reactions because of too much development going on at one point in time, or perhaps there's just too much altogether? So I'm thinking that you really need to implement all of the Auditor General recommendations, but please don't ask us to turn our taps on for 30 minutes and then talk about conservation and implementing water meters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll move on to uh, I'll move on to bylaws for first and second reading. Uh, F1 is rezoning application number 100591, uh, bylaw 5538. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on F1. It carries unanimously. F2 is official community plan amendment, R0100190, and heritage revitalization agreement amendment, and relief residents, uh, bylaw 5536 and 5537. Could I have a motion, please? Motion. Councillor Long, Councillor Kuhn seconds. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on F2. It carries unanimously. Move on to F3, official community plan amendment, application number 100174. This is Brown, bylaw 5539. Could I have a motion, please? Yes. Council Whitmarsh, seconder. We have a second. Council Davis, discussion. Seeing none, call the question F3. Carries unanimously. Move on to bylaws for first, second, and third reading. This is commercial vehicle licensing bylaw, bylaw number 5532. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Davis, second by Councillor Long, was it? Discussion, seeing none, call the question on G1. Carries unanimously. Uh, move on to G2, Development Permit Delegation, University District, Bylaw 5541. Could I have a motion, please? Could I have a motion? Not everybody wants. Or do you want to move to, ref to refer for a presentation? Okay, that would be helpful. Councillor Ferguson moves to refer this to staff for a presentation on the University District and how this impacts it. And Councillor Kuhn seconds it. Discussion on the referral. Seeing none, I call the question on the referral. <coughs> Carries. Excuse me, the Council Arneson opposed. And we want to bylaws for consideration at third reading, H1. Rezoning application number 100537, Dumbo Transport Limited, bylaw 5503. Could I have a motion, please? Oh, Councilor Davis, second by Councilor Kunst. Discussion, see none, call the question on H1. And it carries, Council Woodward opposed. Move to H2, rezoning application number 100515, development permit application 10093, and development permits application number 100104, qualical developments, uh, bylaw 5501 and 5514. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Long moves it. Seconder. I have a second. Councillor Whitmarsh seconds discussion on H2. Seeing none. Oh, hey, Councillor Woodward has discussion on H2. Madam Sparr, can you bring up that, uh, that map I gave you for H2? Yeah. So I just want to remind Council on this well before third reading is complete. I asked staff to prepare this and lay out all three of the applications and show that roughly where the uh, pocket park is supposed to go and just remind council that the pocket park is a condition of third 
that uh, final adoption won't be achievable on these three applications uh, prior to this pocket park issue being resolved. Can you confirm for me that that's correct, Mr. Sevey? Sevey? That's acceptable, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, that is correct, Your Worship. Do you, have, do you want anything to add to that, Mr. Sefi, or do you want to just uh, remind, just confirm, of course, that it'll, final adoption will take approximately how long, do you think? Uh, Your Worship, final adoption typically could take anything between uh, three to three months to a year, or sometimes more than that if there are external approvals necessary from uh, provincial agencies. But typically, I would say within six to nine months if the applicants, uh, consultants are are uh, motivated and, and empowered to, to respond uh, efficiently and effectively to our requests. So I think you think the pocket park here is an issue and came up and we've, we've had a number of communications about it. So I think making it a condition of third on, on these projects and, and giving, the, giving the proponent third reading but giving them time to resolve the pocket park issue if they're able to. But I also want to just mention to Council too that if we start to see more of this, I would like to look at some way to solve this pocket park issue such that we don't have maybe have this issue coming up in the other parts of Willoughby where potentially it's very challenging to secure these pocket parks prior to development approvals. Thanks. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, I'll call the question on H2. Uh, carries with Council Richter opposed. Uh, Ms. Bauer, uh, did I label the previous one incorrectly or I just looked at my screen at the, I got it good okay you got to make sure it's labeled correctly thank you and bylaws for final adoption uh, I1 is Fraser Valley Intermunicipal Business License Program bylaw 5500 Councillor Ferguson moves it second by Councillor Davis discussion see none call the question on I1 carries unanimously Move on to I2, Township Alani Council Procedure Bylaw 2016, number 5199, Amendment Bylaw number 2019, number 5522, Bylaw 5522. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Whitmarsh moves, seconder. Councillor Davis, discussion. Seeing none, call the question on I2. Did you, Councillor Bedard? I don't know if it didn't, didn't connect. Thanks. Carries unanimously. Move on to I three rezoning application number one zero zero five one four and do the development permit separately. Bylaw five four one eight. Could I have a motion on the bylaw, please? Councilor, sorry, motion. Councilor Long, seconder. Councilor Kunst, discussion. See none. Call the question on the bylaw for I three. Carries. Councilor Arneson opposed on the development permit for I three. Could I have a motion? Councilor Ferguson, second. Councilor Davis. Discussion, see none, call the question on the development permit. Carries, Council Arneson opposed. And we want to meetings from prior, uh, items from prior meetings. Um, Councillor Woodward. Yeah, I would just like to move reconsideration as outlined here. The Williams Neighborhood Pan, Blywaz 5334, 5335, and 5336, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, the uh, motion's been moved. Um, in consultation with staff and review of the procedure bylaw, uh, move, I will um, rule that that motion is out of order. And the reason for that is that a resolution uh, cannot be brought back. And it states here that it has not been acted upon in a manner that is impossible to reverse or modify. And uh, this, this bylaw was approved uh, over a year ago and uh, uh, property owners have acted upon the Williams neighborhood plan. So that's the reason I'm ruling it out of order. Okay, there's been a challenge to the chair, so I will take myself out of that. Mark absent. Okay, so there's been a challenge to the chair, and so uh, if you vote in the affirmative, you sustain the chair. So my ruling is that this is out of order, so Council Woodward has challenged that ruling, which is his right. So, that it, so you vote in favor, that means you sustain the chair, that means that the ruling stands. If you vote in opposition, you agree with Councillor Woodward that my ruling is incorrect. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna, so I've, and I can't vote on that, and a tie votes the same as the chair, just for everybody's information. So I'm calling the question. And label as J1. And the chair has been sustained, Councillor Rector, Councillor Woodward opposed. 
So move on to the uh, mayor and council report. And good evening, everyone. Full house. This is excellent. Another mayor's report. Um, there are a few events over the past couple of weeks, um, starting with uh, the groundbreaking and ribbon cutting for Latimer Heights on Thursday, October the 24th. Uh, the first of its kind in Langley, this British style transit oriented development will be pedestrian and eco friendly and will boast 2,000 homes, retail and office space, and a hotel. Also on October 24th, Councilors Arneson, Kuntz, and I attended a tour of the Little Campbell River watershed. Hosted, do I have the right? I, I, sorry? I got the wrong one here. I'm reading, I'm reading uh, last, last week. We could read both. That was last time. Here's the correct one. Sorry. We'll start all over again. I thought, man, that's, uh, my memory is not that bad. That was quite a while ago. This is the November 18th Mayor's Report. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. We'll start over. There were a few events that took place over the past couple of weeks, starting with a climate action event that was hosted here at the Civic Facility on Tuesday, November the 5th. I provided a welcome, and Councilor Arneson, Councilor Kuntz, Councilor Whitmarsh, and Councilor Woodard attended. And Councilor Ferguson. Thank you. The event focused on gathering information to help shape the township's new climate action strategy, which will outline actions for mitigating climate change and prepare our community for environmental changes to come. On Wednesday, November 6th, we welcomed our staff members' children to the annual Take Our Kids to Work Day. Uh, this is a great experience for children to see what we do on a daily basis, and I, being a, well, a good parent myself, I have to ask the kids on that one, uh, ensured that uh, they were administered a civics exam during my welcome, so I had a few skill testing questions for them. Great bunch of kids. Wish I was back in grade 9. On Thursday, November 7th, I attended the Remembrance Day Assembly at Fort Langley Elementary School, where the students placed wreaths along the chairs. I'd like to thank a music educator, Ms. Evans, Mrs. Evans, for the invitation to attend. Also on November 7th, Councilor Ferguson, Councilor Kunst, and I attended the Touch of History event at Trinity Western University, and this was pretty cool. It, these are books that date back th hundreds of years, and uh, they have this uh, had this display uh, that they uh, for us to take a look at and hold some of these ancient books and take a look at them. They had a copy of the Magna Carta from the 1600s. That was pretty interesting. On Friday, November 8th, was the opening of the Langley Arts Council fundraising show called Incognito, which was hosted here at the Civic Facility. Proceeds from the show will help the Arts Council continue its good work, putting on events and programs that benefit not just artists, but the entire community. And that wonderful painting is now gracing the wall in our kitchen. On Saturday, November 9th, I attended the 22nd Annual BC Greenhouse Growers Association reception at the Coast Hotel, which was very well attended. On Monday, November 11th, was Remembrance Day, with ceremonies held throughout the township. Acting Mayor Kunst and Councillor Richter attended in Aldergrove. Councillor Davis, Councillor Whitmarsh, and I, Councillor Whitmarsh and I went to Fort Langley. Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Long, and Councillor Woodward attended in Murrayville, and Councillor Arneson attended the Langley City Ceremony on behalf of the township. I'm pleased to see that each year these services increase in attendance, as we must remember those who sacrificed so much to ensure the liberties we enjoy today. I brought my grandson with me, and he took part in the procession and watched as wreaths were placed to honour our veterans. On Tuesday, November 12th, we promoted the new Low Carbon Mobility Plan, which was recently adopted by Council. The Township wants to make EV use easier and charging stations more accessible as part of our overall strategy to reduce the harmful emissions that can contribute to climate change. We are showing leadership by incorporating EVs into our municipal fleet and providing charging stations for the public and our employees. Later that day, Council Arneson and I attended the Brookswood Furniture Neighborhood Planning Team Meeting for Phase 2. And great to see uh, the uh, community come out and really support this and, and uh, putting a lot of hard work into it. On Wednesday, November 13th, Councilor Arneson and I attended the Emmaus Place Celebration of Construction for the affordable rental homes that are being constructed by Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church in Langley. Actually, uh, Councilor Kunst was there also, I think. Uh, and the Catalyst Community Development Society at 200 Street and 72 Avenue. The Honorable Selena Robinson, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, was also in attendance. So with that, I don't know if there's a page two because everything's out of order here. Here we go. On Thursday, November 14th, I attended the grand opening of the new Freshco grocery store in Aldergrove, which replaces the Safeway at 27566 Fraser Highway. And uh, this, uh, this has certainly um, been, I think, looked forward to by residents in Aldergrove. Did you get your pound of butter? Because if you did, you have to... I, I, I didn't get a pound of butter. No. Can't keep the pound of butter? Okay, I didn't buy any butter. On Friday, November 15th, I was at the press box for the Rams versus Saskatoon Hilltops, Canadian Bowl pre-game excitement, and then I was off to present Bill Berry with a, 
a, a pioneer of Langley with his 95th birthday certificate at Harrison Point. And congratulations to Mr. Barry. Uh, the Canadian Junior Football League action continued Friday evening, November 5th, as acting Mayor Kuntz attended the Banquet of Champions. And I tossed, did the coin toss for the 112th Canadian Bowl held Saturday, November 16th at McLeod Athletic Park. And uh, I know acting Mayor Kuntz was also on hand to see our Langley Rams, unfortunately, were defeated by the Saskatoon Hilltops, uh, who hung on to the title for the sixth year in a row. And uh, it was a, uh, the score was 11 to 6, right? 11 to 6. A very close game, very defensive game. Excellent. Uh, maybe we'll get it next year. On Friday afternoon, November 15th, was the Trinity Western Uni University Spartan Athletics annual complete champions corporate reception at the Langley Event Center. And that's John Scott, former NHL player, as the guest speaker. A very interesting speaker. This morning, I attended a meeting at Kwantlen Polytechnic University and toured the Brewing Lab. I want to also congratulate Township 7 Winery on the recent award. They received the trophy for Best Canadian Sparkling Wine last week at the Champagne and Sparkling Wine World Championships in London, England. Uh, upcoming events, Aboriginal Business Match is on Tuesday, November 19th. That's tomorrow at the Langley Events Centre at 9 a.m. And Douglas Day is on Tuesday, November 19th at the Langley Events Centre at 11.30 where we honour our, our pioneers. Uh, Acting Mayor Kuntz attended the following events. Uh, November 13th, New Directions School Graduation. On November 14th, Operation Red Nose Press Conference. On November 15th, Gateway of Hope Community Meeting. And Councilor Arneson attended the Climate Leaders Institute Workshop on November 7th. And Councilor Ferguson on November 6th, Indigenous Art and Networking Event. And the Tank, uh, at, and the tank delivered along with uh, Acting Mayor Kunst and Councilor Long. So with that, that's the Mayor and Council Report, unless any member of Council has anything to add. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Yeah, oh, and there's the tank. Bob, you want to talk about the... Council Long, tell us about the tank. Well, I think it's been all over the news. It was a tremendous uh, partnership between CN and uh, ma retired Major Newby, the Korean community, and, uh, and uh, myself chipped in a little bit to connect all the dots, but the, it made a trip from one end of the country to the other, and now it's going to be housed in Aldergrove, potentially, to be uh, put in front of the Legion, but we're still working on that one. But Great. it is, it is uh, a, quite a historic piece of it. Yeah, uh, so it looks that way. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. All right. So, oh, Councillor Ferguson, you got some to add. Councillor Ferguson, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, on behalf of sometimes we don't compliment our uh, our colleagues that much, but you know, Councillor Long did an awful lot to get the tank from uh, <laughs> all the way from Halifax to uh, to Surrey here, and then got it transferred from Surrey to uh, to Aldergrove. So certainly his his contacts with CN and uh, should be complimented. And I know that. Uh, that was an expensive proposition that CN picked up. So, congratulations to Councillor Long and his team, okay, Mr. Major Newby and everybody else. But certainly, Councillor Long did an awful lot for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. Um, is there anything to Councillor Richter? Anything you have for the Metro Vancouver representative's report? Uh, we have a meeting coming up, so we haven't just been committee meetings up to now. That's right. So, great, and that's like the inaugural meeting. So, the whole, with Metro Vancouver, it's an annual. Um, appointment and so the inaugural is on the 28th. All right, so we'll move on to. I'm, I've got items brought back. It's just for information. Other business. Okay, so Councilor Arneson, I'm going to put you on. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just for brevity, I think I'll just read the latter part of my motion. So, um, Therefore, be it resolved that Council direct staff to review the options for the development of a biodiversity strategy for the township with the broader goal of increasing the amount of natural areas, enhancing biodiversity, and expanding access to nature in our community. Staff's subsequent report <coughs> excuse me, to Council should include a review of similar strategies within other metro communities, possible timelines for development of the strategy, budgetary implications, staff resources, as well as opportunities to work with other stakeholder partners further to the integration of existing sensitive ecosystem mapping information in order to inform the strategy. It's moved and seconded by Councillor Richter. Is there discussion on this? 
Can I talk? You can speak to it. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. Sorry. <laughs> I, I won't read everything because it's like war and peace. Uh, but basically, uh, I'm just hoping that uh, Council will support this. We had a very good presentation this evening. Um, and for those who might be familiar with the background about this, the township has actually done a lot of work in the past and has uh, some substantive policies that we've created. We also have a sustainability framework, and we use that to help to guide the decision-making that we're creating on a regular basis, like tonight when we see our reports and we have a way of affirming to ourselves that we're doing the right thing for our community on social, economic, as well as ecological levels. So that's all really great. Uh, but why we're bringing this forward now, <clears throat> excuse me, why I'm bringing it forward is that a lot of our documents are very high-level documents, and what this strives to do is to dig down and look deeper into what we have as our natural resources in the township of Langley, because, in fact, when we talk about biodiversity, it sounds like a kind of amorphous thing. Well, what does it mean? But it really is just the integrity of the web of life that we all depend on. And so from a local point of view, it's really about the wildlife that we find here, the water courses, the streams, the aquatic creatures, all of these things. And when you look even more closely, you'll determine, and it's been recognized um, more and more, that once you start to undermine this integrity of your biodiversity, you really are structurally undermining your own existence because everything depends on the integrity of the web. And so pollinators, creatures, and human beings themselves are very dependent on the fact that we have access to these resources and we should not um, do things uh, that would squander what we currently have. So as was mentioned tonight, we are in a perfect position to be able to do something in another regard, which is before you do something that is irreversible, what we can do in terms of our development plans is to make sure that we are setting aside and protecting an adequate amount of habitat. So this is really a science-based and scientific exercise, and it's very simple systematic to make sure that we are looking at the entirety of all our neighborhoods and planning areas to make sure that we have what is adequate, not just for now, but for going forward. I couldn't state strongly enough about how important this is for climate action. It's really quite a consideration in terms of mitigation because many of these same features are going to be the ones that will, in fact, make us more resilient in the long term. So I'm bringing this forward. Um, I'm hope hoping it will be supported. It really is just asking for further details from uh, staff who are looking into the budget timeline and other considerations as well as looking into what other communities have done. And I'm hoping that if it's supported that we can put it forward for 2020 budget deliberations if that's possible. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Um, I've got a question for staff, uh, maybe uh, Mr. Seffi or Mr. Backen. Um, I think this is good. Um, you know, we do, we do a lot in the Township of Langley when it comes to uh, all of our plans and streamside protections, and, and and there's a lot there. So I think this would be good, perhaps, that staff, you know, not only just look at this, but maybe com maybe um, combining and, and and or not combining, but letting council know what's what, what's all being done, and that can be combined in something. I think I think we're really doing a lot of this stuff. It just needs to be. Um, Presented to council in a way that you know it fits into this. The other thing I heard from the delegation is that the Metro Vancouver has already, been, already done a biodiversity uh, strategy for the region, and just how that impacts what we're what we would be doing and how that would uh, complement what we're doing. So um, I don't know, Mr. Backen or Mr. Seffi, uh, with all the different plans and programs that we have, uh, having a biodiversity strategy. I think we're kind of doing a lot of it, but not really calling it a biodiversity strategy. Uh, is that something that, that you'd be looking at in this? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. As the uh, uh, one of the delegations this afternoon, this evening, uh, reference, Your Worship. Uh, one example is the the rain garden idea that that uh, we implemented in the Township of Langley uh, several years ago, and is just taking uh, shape in terms of actually being implemented. We're seeing results of it, and uh, I think it was uh, at the beginning, at least, with some some. Uh, 
I guess, resistance and some pain and agony, as is the case typically, but we demonstrated leadership uh, from council and and we managed to uh, make it a successful thing and we're now seeing the benefits of it. So that's just one example. So certainly we are doing some uh, uh, measures, taking some measures in that, in that area. Thank you. Councilor Woodward. Yeah, I kind of want to echo that as well. Um, I think if you look at this, uh, the development of a biodiversity strategy for the township with a broader goal of increasing the amount of natural areas, enhancing biodiversity, and expansing, expanding access to nature in our community. Um, the example I would give is um, as part of the borrowing bylaw that we will um, be approving later on. We acquired a 40-acre park, for example, I think 36 acres, something like that. Um, and that would be a pretty good example of, of us doing this already at, at a pretty good land acquisition cost. So um, I think that that might be true. We might maybe bringing in and collating and presenting a lot of the things that are already happening and a lot of us already are working on and care about, um, you know, sort of overlooking the suggestion that maybe we're not already doing a lot of this. And, of course, we can, we can always do more. So I'll support it. But um, I think that, the, you know, creating another strategy, I've always, my inclination will tend to be to look what's in the existing documents that may be spread out already. And if we're not doing enough, look at doing more. But uh, the idea of creating strategy documents that sit on a shelf is not something I typically support. I would like to see some recognition of what we're doing. It could be a very small document. It can be an understanding and bringing in other ideas from all the different documents that exist. And there's a tremendous quantity of documentation to read and know to really capture how much of this we're doing and whether there's more to do. So I think I would support it to get that overview from staff whether this kind of a specific strategy document is necessary versus creating yet another document that nobody reads. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Richter. Yeah, I um, support um, having this uh, go forward as well. And um, contrary to uh, comments that were just made with regards to um, you know, borrowing for park purposes. The borrowing for park purposes that's happening is going to end up with clear cutting for schools and fields, playing fields. So that's not protecting biodiversity. I think we need to start addressing it more. Thanks, uh, Councilor Woodward. Yeah, no, I, I, I get this. I get the sense that not every. A uh, piece of land that we acquired as part of those buying barks is going to end up a park, but the, the specific item I mentioned was the uh, the specific uh, in the ALR, the portion below the Terra Farms development, which was part of the original development discussions with the developer. And so when that transitioned to a township purchase, that area was mm -hmm. mandatory as part of that deal to ensure that that area remained green and parked. So I just want to clarify. Thanks, yeah, thanks for that clarification. Okay, I'll call the question on N1. And it carries unanimously. All right. Um, let's see. And two. And Councillor Arneson, I'll put your mic back on. Thank yes, you. thank you, Worship. Um, like before, I'll just read the latter part of the motion. It's about housing. Uh, therefore, be resolved that Council direct staff to review opportunities to consider negotiated affordable housing service agreements managed by third party service providers that can be considered in rental housing development applications as a community amenity financed by the, I have to get rid of that word because there's no aforementioned, reserve fund, and that staff report back to council as part of a strategic review of the housing action plan and mandated housing needs assessment in order to consider how these funds can be utilized in order to provide subsidized housing opportunities within rental complexes in private market developments in the township. Moved by so. Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Richter. Yeah. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I will take the time, actually, to hopefully be able to explain this adequately to my colleagues. Um, I just wanted to mention that today is a meeting day for 1,500 people that are going to the BC nonprofit housing event in order to discuss, amongst other things, how local residents are able to access affordable housing. So affordability gets bandied around a lot. <clears throat> I think some of us are 
a bit concerned sometimes when we hear that term because it does seem rather vague and we don't necessarily know at any given time exactly what that means. But there is a defined meeting and basically and historically it's meant if you're spending more than 30% of your income, it means that you are not adequately housed. You pay too much for your housing. Well, that's a common problem, as we all know, so I won't go into that uh, because I think it's quite clear in terms of homelessness and other uh, issues that we have, other social issues, that we are really lacking at this time to have adequate low-end rental housing for individuals. So that's specifically the focus of this. So I took this idea and started looking at other, um, Councillor Woodward helpfully talked about strategies and reports. Well, I actually looked at one today that was very helpful for Metro Vancouver, and what it was saying is how to get the affordable housing that you want. And it's not necessarily the case that there is a one-size-fits-all, but housing agreements have been found in a number of communities to be very helpful. So I tried to marry the ideas that were coming forward. We have a community amenity charge that's now being... Um, put towards uh, affordable housing and other things in our community. But the idea for me, I was challenged to think, how long will it take for this fund to actually create any affordable housing? So the idea was to direct and to empower staff to look at what they're already doing with our rental units. So those are coming on stream. I'm not trying to suggest that we don't have rental housing. But the idea about having inclusive housing means that we are able to deliver to people affordable housing, and it's going to be in an environment that works for them. So they're near to services. They're close, probably, to schools, infrastructure, transportation, and all those kinds of things. So at the same time that we're building out these market units, it gives us an opportunity to consider taking those funds and creatively using them so that at, to some degree, and that's all up to the negotiation of staff, how we can um, make these agreements so that people will be able to utilize um, these wonderful places to live. So this is not something that's separate and apart from what we're already doing. When I talked to staff, it was um, indicated to me that it makes sense at the same time we're looking at our housing action plan and reviewing it and seeing where the current gaps are and at the same time we are required to create um, another plan to indicate what it is that we uh, may be missing in terms of a needs assessment. So at the same time, this is just something that staff can work towards with some direction from council in order to look at how to best utilize those funds in the midterm so that we do have some further housing options for our citizens. Thank you. And discussion, I got Councillor Ferguson. Well, I think I think something like this, important like this, it may be something we should maybe just discuss at some planning session or something at the council priorities committee or something. It's, it's certainly important. I certainly we need to look at other. Certainly, Metro Vancouver has housing. We have provincial and federal responsibilities as well, and uh, I think it's important to uh, sit down, roll up our sleeves, and look at what we can do and cannot do within the community, especially if we don't have CACs. In, in place yet, but basically I think uh, it's something we should uh, uh, look at in, in with more time and value. I'm not sure if you're entertaining a motion, Mr. Mayor, right now, or whether you want to wait for the rest of the people to speak. If but not, I would refer I've got to, two refer more to a Council Priorities yeah. Committee meeting. Maybe we hear from the speakers and then if you want to do a referral. Okay. Okay. Councillor Whitmarsh. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, this uh, is an, uh, an interesting motion um, regarding uh, rental housing, and certainly I'm supportive of trying to provide more rental housing, but as I, as I read through this motion, I guess I'm just a little bit confused on exactly what um, we're asking for in this motion. I've, I'm looking through it, and I'm seeing about three or four different things uh, that are being asked for, and I'm not sure really what the intent of it is, is how we, how we utilize the money better, how we get access to rental properties quicker than the fund will build up, so some, some interim strategies, um, I'm not sure if it's how are we actually meeting the needs of the, of the or the how are we doing with the review of the housing action plan. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm not opposed to something with rental housing, but I'm just not really, to be honest, understanding exactly what the motion is addressing and what the key points of the motion are. So 
maybe the mover could uh, just explain in, in brief point form what are the key elements that is being asked for in this motion. Councillor Long. Well, I don't want to answer on behalf of the mover, no. but I think all of the things that have been mentioned here are things that should be considered. And so perhaps uh, having a special session on this would be the way to, to, to work it through, because there's all kinds of options available to us. I was going to mention Metro Housing. We're one of the few communities that don't have a Metro Housing uh, project, but there is now some funding uh, available that uh, has been put forward by Metro Board to try and initiate some projects, and, uh, and the municipalities have to put some land together to participate in that, so maybe this 10% could be applied to mortgages to get some land and this and that. I don't think we can decide it here, but that's another thing that can be discussed. So if there is a motion to uh, refer this to a workshop where we can work through some uh, interim uh, policies, I think that would be a very good thing. Because it, as it says in the motion, if we just wait for that 10% to build up, well, uh, by the time it builds up, it'll be too late. So let's get started. Oh, Councilor Ernestin, okay. I'll go back to Councilor Ferguson. Uh, Councilor Ferguson, do you wish to make a referral motion? Uh, I'll second okay. Councilor Long's motion. <laughs> okay, that's fine with me. Housing workshop. Okay, so Councilor Long moves that this be referred to a work on housing. Okay. And second by, I can't do everything ASP. We got, we got all the other lists that say yes. Okay. Right. Second by Councilor Ferguson. Discussion on, on the referral. Seeing none, I'll call the question. He carries the council director post. Okay. And the next one's mine. Look at that, eh? I'll clear the queue. Uh, so this is, uh, whereas recent uh, media reports and social media posts have raised questions of campaign donations during the 2018 municipal election in the Township of Langley, and whereas updated Elections BC rules on campaign donations were put in place during the 2018 municipal election, and whereas further clarity of the campaign donation rules would assist candidates seeking election in the 2022 municipal election, therefore be it resolved that the Township of Langley Council write the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing to conduct a review of election BC rules for campaign donations and spending, in particular the below listed, listed concerns, and make amendments to the Local Elections Campaign Financing Act in time for the implementation prior to the 2022 municipal election. The review could involve consultations with municipalities and the public to address the below listed concerns and any other issues that may arise during the review. Uh, number one, not allowing campaign donations that are exchanged between candidates to increase their personal contribution to their own campaign above the $2,400 limit. Number two, campaign spending limits and donation rules to be imposed to cover the election period and campaign period rather than just during the campaign period. And number three, rules governing donations by individuals with affiliations to organizations, corporations, and unions who have interest in resolutions before the council of the municipality where the candidates are running for office be clarified to ensure transparency in keeping with the intent of donations from organizations, corporations, and unions as a move. Seconder? Second. Councillor Coons seconds it. Uh, just a little quick uh, explanation. Uh, I am concerned, and I have mentioned it several times in some of the comments and through social media and, and, and the media, uh, regarding uh, the rules and, uh, of the campaign donations. I think it's important that, uh, that uh, this council uh, ask the minister um, to do a review of the, um, of the rules to help clarify some of those. And as these are new rules that were just put in the last election, um, I'm sure that there are more areas of concern than just this. I just raised these three this because that's what, what has come to me. Uh, I did have a uh, brief uh, conversation with the minister, and the minister advised me that they are going to be doing a review, uh, that they are, they are well aware that uh, it is a, these were new rules and that there um, is a need to review how well it worked, what worked, what didn't work. And, uh, and that uh, the minister also said they're looking, they will, are looking for input from municipalities. So this is just a, a one piece of input from this municipality, and uh, certainly hope it, it um, you know, will go to them and, and really leave it with the minister because uh, that's where this belongs. Um, also received an email, I think just today, it's on our distribution from a citizen who's also written to the minister, and I think that's great that this created that kind of interest, uh, that this motion, whether it's this motion or, or independently, but nevertheless, people are interested and that they're uh, writing to the minister and saying, hey, this is, there are some issues here, let's take a look at it, let's get some clarity so that um, I think in the 2022 election, uh, people ha are able to go uh, forward with some clear rules and, uh, and make sure that um, 
what happens is transparent. So that's uh, why I put this in here. It's a letter to the minister. Certainly this list is not, uh, does not rule out other uh, ideas, but it's just a start to, uh, to ask the minister for a review. And uh, from what she's told me that they are planning to do that. Uh, so discussion, Councillor Richter. Yes, um, I certainly support writing the minister as well too. I think there needs to be some clarity around uh, the issues. But I don't think that um, rushing into writing a letter is going to serve our purposes well. I think we need to take our time, go through all the ducks, and make sure they're lined up properly, and then send the letter. Uh, so what I'd like to do is to refer this to, I was going to say, a CPC meeting, but apparently we don't have any availability until June. Uh, so a special workshop as well, so that we can go through it. Uh, for example, in the motion here, number one, not allowing campaign donations that are exchanged between candidates to increase their personal contribution above the $2,400 limit. Well, the $2,400 limit was a one-time limit only. It's actually $1,200, and they allowed the $2,400 for the first election, but it's not my understanding that that will be carrying forward. Um, I personally think they have a huge loophole in there, uh, where candidates can exchange checks with each other. Uh, and so candidates have done it. I know I did it. I certainly did it. Uh, I did exchange checks with uh, Councillor uh, Woodward. That was not illegal, and it was disclosed. But going forward, perhaps these contributions between candidates should not be permitted uh, because it, uh, it can create a situation uh, where slates... Would, uh, would be forming unofficial slates that are probably um, self-financing through those uh, exchanges. I also think that the minister needs to take a real close look at whether or not we should be suspending municipal operations during the election period. Just like the federal government and the provincial government does, uh, the government does not function when the campaigning is on. And a lot of the problems that we've gotten into is because we continue to function and we continue to vote on development matters while we're taking campaign donations uh, from developers or friends of developers, it depends. And I think that needs to be thoroughly addressed as well. So I would, as I said, like to refer this to a special meeting to make sure we've got all of the issues identified. I know the mayor referenced a letter that we received from Mr. Brad Reichert. He's got some excellent ideas in there too. And uh, we want to make sure that we put a good, strong argument forward as to how things need to change. Oh, and the last thing that I think needs to change, I don't understand why candidates are limited to $1,200 into their own campaign. That's nonsense. You can't even buy signs for $1,200. Thank, thank you for that. Really good points. And I know I, I, I put this together, um, and I know it's, it, there, there could be more. One way of doing this, and I'll just throw it out to Councillor Richter, while you still have the mic on, is that um, we could hold off on the letter. I think it's important that we just let the, let the minister know that we we're interested in this. But perhaps members of council could add to it, uh, and then prior to it, uh, then staff could draft a letter, bring it back to council for the review. But then if, if members of council have um, ideas such as you raised, um, just forward that off to staff, and then we can uh, draft a letter, bring it back for, for council's uh, review, because, you know, I'm wondering if we go back to, you know, go to a discussion, really, we're just wanting, and I think the minister is also going to be looking for input and reaching back to the municipalities. Well, we will have a public consultation, so just leave you with that thought while I go through the speaker's list. Okay. Um, Councillor Davis? Uh, thank you. I just, I, I don't think council members should have a lot to do with the rules um, because uh, we could make the rules benefit us. I think that the mentioned uh, Brad Richter had some real good ideas. Um, I just, I think this voting session, like in 2011, uh, we had, it was a very short time before the election. Uh, 2014 was uh, a short time before the election, but this 2018, we came into these new rules and we had way too much time, I feel, between between and we had to make decisions on the 
on it. So I, I support sending the letter, but I'm just wondering if the letter, um, you know, it's got three of your ideas, but it says here a review. Is this going to be a review of the future 2000 or 2022 election, or are we going to review the 2018 well, the 2018 is over, so I can't do much about that. But, but they, that's the, the yeah. whole reason this is here is because we had some issues. Because of what we heard. Yes. Yeah. So that's so, why I spoke to the minister, and, and this is what she said. The end. But yeah. you can, if you go backwards, you can learn that's right. to go forward. That's right. So I, I definitely think, um, but I, I just don't think that us as a council member, even though we live in the township of Langley, we should be involved in what we should be allowed to do. Because I have my ideas, uh, I could, you know, fly in the sky, and 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 um, I, I guess we have to have some sort of rules. But I think rules would come better from outside. I agree, and this is just input. It's just, yeah, they don't have to. So I'm gonna, I'm going to support it going. Thank uh, you, thank you, Council Woodward. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate David Davis for finishing first in the election, spending $2,000 and taking no money from no one. Um, um, I think that, that shows that you don't need money to win the election. Um, of course, I've got a got number, uh, number of issues with this motion that I, if it's going to get referred, don't, don't see the point of belaboring it. I think the, the motion speaks for itself. I think the intent of the motion speaks for itself, and I think where it's coming from and why it's here speaks for itself. Thanks. Thank you. I speak for myself too. Four Council Long. Four times now. <laughs> no, I yeah, well, I don't see questions. it speaking for, for me, that's for sure. And I, I agree with uh, Councillor Davis, and I think we should all think about we don't, shouldn't be finding ourselves in a position where we're, we're making the rules. We need to follow the rules. We take an oath of office when we are elected as councillors to follow the rules, and the rules are set out by the province. Certainly there should be lots of uh, communication with the province on what's happened at this election, but that's up to individuals to do it. I think every individual in council can write a letter to the minister. You can write a letter, your worship perhaps, uh, and everybody in this room, if they feel so inclined, should write a letter. But I don't think it should be coming from council. But if it does, perhaps it should uh, exclude those points one, two, and three, because as has been mentioned here, there could be... 11 points or 12 points and we're going to have a big argument and, uh, and uh, you know discussions or so forth about whose pet peeve is whose right so perhaps uh, I can I could agree with the first three paragraphs or four paragraphs but on the other hand like Councilor Woodward said it speaks for itself what does it speak for I don't think there is an issue I think the rules have been followed and I don't think we should, we should be poking our nose into it at all There'll be a review done for sure by the province because they have to look at what's, what's been uh, set forth in the last election and see what worked and what didn't. So perhaps a letter that would simply encourage them to continue to do that and to do a good job of that, that I could support. But I don't think I would support putting these three points in or any further points that council would come up with. Sorry. I like that. That sounds good, thanks. Council Whitmarsh. Yeah, so uh, thank you. I think this is... Uh, an important topic it obviously came up in in the media uh, social media and other places um, I think these three that are listed here are probably the three uh, areas that uh, seem to come up most often in our own municipality of concerns um, I don't think that um, there's any member of our council that didn't follow the rules I think everyone did follow the rules but there are some uh, some challenges that have come up with that because it's clear that the rules don't cover all sorts of situations and so I do think that um, giving some input from, from those who are on council who went through a campaign is helpful. Uh, not that we should be the only ones that contribute information to the minister, and ultimately it is the, minister, the ministry's decision on what those rules actually are. I agree with Councillor Long that whatever those rules are, every member of council needs to follow them. And those rules do come from the ministry. But now that we're in a period of review, I think it does make sense that council um, provides some input of some of the challenges that we've faced uh, there may be more to this list of three. I agree with uh, Mayor Froese that there may be more than three, and I'm certainly open to other people adding some things. I also think that there will probably be an opportunity for public to engage in it and to provide information to the ministry as well, um, whatever they choose as a form of review. We're just simply asking them to review it and to make sure they follow uh, through with that or asking them to follow through with that because that's important to all the municipalities in the province. It's important for all of us that we remain uh, honest, that we provide our leadership with integrity, and that we're very transparent in what happens. 
And so, um, to me, this is important. I think it's an important step as we go forward um, that we've asked this, and I certainly would support this. I do support the idea of adding more and having a bit more time uh, for us to create what that letter might look like, but I do support the concept of, of providing input. Thank you. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, it, it's an interesting notion that how we take, I guess, the um, the germ of this idea and maybe move it forward into something that's uh, substantive and is really reflective, I think, of the overall um, perspective of council. Um, maybe contrary to some of my fellow colleagues, I really think it's important that people who participate in this process have something to say about it. I mean, we're directly affected by rules that are made by others. I'm not using that as an excuse to say that there were new rules. <clears throat> However, I do remember speaking directly to Elections BC, if you have any questions, and I was consistently told that if I had anything that was something they th could be reviewed, that I should certainly let them know, because I gave them an earful about some of their policies that I thought were either onerous, didn't make any sense, and it was nothing having to do with this issue. This came up and sort of, I think, blindsided us in the sense that um, you know, there's many different interpretations of things that happen, but I think more than anything for me, public confidence in our process is the most critical, so the optics are something that we really need to address, and whether somebody feels or not they have transgressed or, or crossed any lines, I think it's important for us to know the nuances of that, but more than that, I think our letter would help to let the government know that we can be challenged in the situations that they have set up for us. And it does create some vague or gray areas in which we have to attend to say, well, would I be in a conflict of interest? Is this is somewhere I feel I should recuse myself? So, But those are the things that have to be firmly known because when you put a number of highly competitive individuals <laughs> together in a race. <laughs> you have to expect that, you know, there's, there's always this inclination. Maybe we can just push potentially a boundary or two if it's not really wrong. So anyways, this is my long-winded way of saying I think it would be a great opportunity. I think there's lots of things that we can do, and it depends also on the will of the provincial government to look at the system that they've created. I mean, I can think of lots of things. Why can't we have a blind trust? I think uh, Councillor Richter made a good recommendation. Well, why don't we just cease uh, our operations until such time as that period is over? But what I do wonder is, what if we could get donations, but we had no idea where they were coming from? And it just went into a secure account, and it could be managed in that way. So I think there's opportunities to be creative, and I, but I do think that we owe it to ourselves as well as to the public to be as transparent as possible in this process. So I welcome the opportunity to talk with my colleagues about this. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Uh, I guess we're all getting a, a chance to kick at the can on this particular one. I think I'm the seventh or eighth councillor to speak. Uh, I was saddened to hear uh, some of the news and media stories that went on. Um, most of the, perhaps those in the media don't realize or didn't just understand that, that most of Langley, all of Langley Township councillors are independent. So we either run our own campaigns or uh, our own official agent or uh, we do a lot of the groundwork by ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, if you look at a comparison or look at, you know, what other folks are doing in, in other communities, Vancouver, Burnaby, our friends in Surrey, they uh, get money from elector organization and who knows where the money is coming from and who knows... Uh, uh, how the votes are, are recorded or taken at those particular councils accordingly. I mean, that's, it's a matter of, I guess, if folks want to investigate it. I don't think anybody's breaking any rules, but certainly that is the case. And uh, to pick on a, well, pick on, to decide that the, to determine a community like Langley is uh, folks doing something uh, 
uh, less than scrutin uh, scrutinous is, uh, is certainly not the case. Anyway, I was saddened to hear that. I was hoping that this would go away, that we could move on and uh, do a business of counsel. Um, if you want to send as many letters as you want, um, many of us, as Councilor Arnson and others are concerned, do discuss with Elections BC. And a little bit of history here at, uh, um, I guess, throughout the region or the province. I mean, years and years ago, uh, there was no disclosures whatsoever. Just people ran campaigns. They put big signs up. They used trucks for Sam, for to put their signs up. They covered freeways. They put signs up two, three hundred feet in the air, and that's just the way things went. It wasn't that long ago. And then people were getting money under the table, and that was taken away. And that wasn't that long ago. Now there was corporations that you could get money down. You put the right the uh, address for the company. That was taken away. And now individual donors donate to each and every candidate that that wish to take that throughout province. That's the way it is. And so things have gotten significantly better for the province. You may not read that on in the, on the evening news or something, but things are getting significantly better. And I believe that by the time we get to the next campaign, uh, for those of us who are running, things will be a heck of a lot better. But I don't think anybody at this table has done anything wrong. Um, send as many letters as you want. I hope we can move on and, uh, you know, for the betterment of the community and those that do the media can understand that you know, we have a responsibility and there is such a thing as people that follow the rules. And everyone in this council that I'm aware of follows the rules. And uh, I'd like Lections BC. My last thing is that they phoned me up one day. said, Mr. Ferguson, you've written down a donor twice, your wife. And I said to, her, I said to them, oh, I'm sorry. What would you like me to do? Oh, that's okay, Mr. Ferguson. Just, just send in the form again and take your wife's off, name off because you put it down twice. I thank them very much. So it was a, they're a good group of people to work with. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, I'd be happy to make an amendment. Maybe I was presumptuous to put in the three points. Those are my ideas, and, and I think it's been pointed out. Any member of council or member of the public can write a letter to the minister and, uh, and ask for it. So I'd be happy to make an amendment to remove one, two, and three and remove the words in particular, the below, below listed concerns, and the words to address the below listed concerns, just so that really we want to put this in front of the minister and ask that there's a review and that we're willing to participate. I'd be happy to make that amendment, and uh, and that way, you know, the, the whole idea is just to address the ministers. Second by Councillor Long, and discussion on the amendment. Councillor Davis, um, so just straight send me a letter. Well, is there maybe something in between? It says here, okay, therefore resolve that Township of Langley read the Minister of um, Municipal Affairs and Housing to conduct a review of elections BC rules for campaign donations and spendings. But is is that like um, the mover or the, the what what do you call you? Well, I, I, moved, mover. I moved it now. I'm okay. to, to but say there's a reason a you moved it. Yes, and to there's, get a review. A, there's a problem. There's a problem. We need to get to the bottom of it. Well, um, can we not? Like I I, I understand uh, to take them out. But we uh, we don't want to start to push them down a, a, a road, but are they going to come? Like they did a review in two thousand uh, in the two thousand eighteen. That was the new review. So, like I say, the intent of the motion is to say, hey, let's take a look at what maybe went wrong. Uh, but is that going to send them enough information? Like, you know, I guess either way, I, uh, we got to send a letter. And but why not put? Um, you know, we, we got to put something in there because why we send them in a letter? Hey, let's review it. Why? Well, we know why. Okay. So that's what I'm concerned about. Like, I mean, Mr. R Richter had some good ideas, and I'm not suggesting he, he wrote he's his the only to the one. Yeah. What's that? His letter is written to the minister. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, I, I just would wonder if not putting anything there, but right now, I, like I say, may, well, I go either way. I'm just worried that we're, we're not getting the intent of the motion. Thank you. Councilor Richter? Um, I agree with dropping this list out but what I don't agree with is not coming up with a replacement list that is based on our collective voice and I think a letter coming from us collectively will carry more weight than individual letters coming from us 
so I still want to refer it to some sort of a, a session where we can generate the ideas to put into this letter that we want to send rather than just say, oops, well, something went wrong. We've sent, we've asked the minister to review and it's over and done with. No, she needs what I would consider to be informed input. And who better to get informed input from than the people that actually ran in the election? Thank you. Councilor Woodward. Yeah, I just want to add before you take any um, referral motions, it'll be my last turn to speak on to the main motion itself. It's on, it's on an amendment right now. It's on an amendment right yeah. now? Okay, I mean, I'll wait till we speak to the main sure. motion again. Thanks. Councilor Long? Well, I'm supporting the amendment because I don't think we should be continuing the conversation. Everyone's got an opinion. So this, this letter actually does address the concern because in the whereas, as it says right there, there's been a concern about um, campaign donations, about rules, uh, that there should be more transparencies, and it would clarify the donations for the 2022 or, and clarify for those that are seeking election in 2022. So that's really what we need to do. Council is unanimous, well, hopefully, or the collective thought of council is, hey, minister, you better have a review of this because there's been some concerns raised in the community and leave it open that way. I mean, I think that everyone can write their own letters if they have specific concerns, but I think that encouraging the minister to have a review is really what we're asking for here, and I agree with that. Thank you. All right, I'll call the question on the amendment is to remove the um, three points to leave it more open and then the words where it says in particular the below listed concerns and to address the below, so taking the below concerns out. So to leave it more open and then the intent is that, you know, so that's, that's what the amendment is. Okay. And the amendment um, carries with Councilor Woodward and Councilor Davis opposed. So we're back to the main motion as amended. Uh, Councillor Richter, you're next on the speaker's list. Yeah, I, I would like to refer this to a, a, a council session where we can come up with a, a list of items that we think need to be addressed that we all agree on. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Arneson seconds uh, the referral. Uh, discussion on the referral? Referral to where? To to her, referring it to, I'm sorry. A, a, a session of council. Session of CPC I'm leaving yeah. it open yeah. because I don't know yeah. when CPC, we can schedule yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Long. With all due respect, that's not going to happen. We're not going to all agree. So <laughs> let's just send the letter. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Whitmarsh. Yeah, is, um, is this the suggestion to go to CPC? Well, that's our, that is the council of the whole, and that's probably the most appropriate. So, so, so we did hear we're... earlier that that might be June. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. This won't be a priority. All right. Councilor Woodward? Yeah, no, I, I don't support the referral. I think you can send a letter, and then if there's other ideas floating around, I think they're going to make their way to the provincial government. I just can't imagine uh, the, the Township Council coming up with a list of uh, campaign finance reform package. I mean, I, actually, it actually strikes me as a tad absurd. Um, so I think for me, I think the, you know, I just want to remind everybody that uh, the recent CTV news reports, which I think generated this notice of motion, have absolutely nothing to do with elections to BC rules. Thanks. All right, I'll call the question on N3, and that is the referral. And the referral fails. Councilor Ferguson, Councilor Whitmarsh, Councilor Kuntz, Mayor Froze, Councilor Woodward, Councilor Long opposed. So we're back to the main motion, and Councilor, oh, Councilor Woodward, okay. Councilor Davis, did you wish to speak to the Oh, I'm motion? sorry, no. Okay. So I'm going to call the question on the motion as amended. And the motion carries unanimously. Move on to N4, and let's clear everything off. Yeah, I'm just making sure I got everything done here. Councilor Woodward. Yeah, thanks. So I just have a notice of motion regarding uh, legal opinions here that we rely on. The, I'm going to read it. I think, I think it's important. The Township of Langley Council legal orientation package dated November 23, 2018 within contracting with local government is apparently incompatible with the legal opinion dated September 18th on the same subject of council members bidding on and performing Township of Langley contracts and whereas the Township of Langley legal opinion dated November 4th provided to Mayor Jack Froze for the apparent purposes of a press release appears incomplete when compared to the previously provided legal opinions on the same subject dated Jan June 8, 2016 and July 19, 2019, respectively. Whereas 
For all of these instances of legal orientation and these multiple legal opinions outlined above were provided to mayor and council by the same firm on behalf of the corporation of the Township of Langley, whereas the provision of the community charter for elected officials to be acting in good faith, quote unquote, relies heavily upon the legal advice provided by the corporation of the Township of Langley to its elected members of council. Therefore, be it resolved that staff be directed by council to complete the legal opinion dated November 4th, 2019, expand or amend other applicable documents provided to mayor and council, including the legal orientation dated November 23, 2018, as may be necessary or applicable, and review the possibility of presenting qualified alternatives to the member of Lang Towns members of Township of Langley Council for the purposes of determining the potential for ongoing conflicts of interest or other related issues, such as the awarding of Township contracts members of council, along with any other suggestions that may be applicable. I still move. Thank you, my Councilor Richter, my Councilor Woodward. Councilor Woodward, do you wish to speak to it? Yeah, I'll speak, or, um, yeah, speak to it. Uh, just you wondering about division on this, all of this. Yeah, there of are, course, I'd be quite happy to entertain division. Um, and so your motion, do you want to just uh, go through the conversation on all of it, and then we'll just divide and vote? That, uh, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to move yeah. division before or after I speak to it, uh, it doesn't really matter to me that much. But if you yeah. want to, so your intent here is we'll speak twice on all three components and then vote individually as you've done in the past? Is that your intent? We could. Intent? It's, it's fine it's, with me. That's what we've done in the past. Yeah. I have no... No yeah. problems with proceeding with that yeah. on this Sure, motion. as I think it's, these are some important ones. So I'm going to move division. We have other business to get to I'm, as well. I'm going to move division. Okay. And is there a seconder? Okay. Councilor Whitmarsh, I'll just show of hands. Those in favor of division? Opposed? Carries unanimously. All right, so I'll just leave it to council. You can speak to all three if you wish. Yeah, you are. I'm just saying to council, you can speak to all three at once if you wish, or, you know, we're going to be going through each one separately, so... Time is of the essence, but uh, time is on. of the essence. We have other things to get to. I think we can uh, we can we can uh, approve these individually, and then staff can work on them, and then the discussions will continue. I think for me as a new councillor, I keep reminding myself that you know I've been on council for just over a year now, and so I've spent a lot of time and energy, you know, learning about the rules to be a councillor, the oath of office, and the community charter, and I've read as much of it as I've had time to do. Local Government Act and a number of the provisions around these things. And we, what I've discovered is we rely heavily upon legal advice from the Township of Langley's corporate lawyer to or, um, the corporation to provide us with these through the administration to determine. And I've requested a number of legal opinions uh, to determine conflict of interest and then to conduct myself accordingly. And I'm a little frustrated with what, I, what, I, what I've seen. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm a little frustrated that when I got my legal orientation package in November of 2018, it told me that I could not bid on a township contract. And if I did so and I was awarded that contract, I had to report that to the administration and to council very clearly and definitively was told had to do that. That was the process. And now there's a legal opinion, which I've discovered was released, which explained that that wasn't necessary and we'll just report it after the fact and that's fine. And I, and I feel like we're, we're heading down the same path again and I don't want to belabor the past. I don't want to live in the past. So I want this council to function and move forward effectively. But I'm concerned as a councillor, how do I rely on this advice to conduct myself, uh, to be acting in good faith as per the community charter, if legal opinions are becoming politicized. And so that's what I am trying to put a stop to. I would like to have legal advice that I can rely on that doesn't change with the wind and is not incomplete in regards to major, major issues that come up. And when we're criticized, we address that criticism rationally and calmly. We don't try to deflect it onto other people. We simply address it and move on to the next issue and let the voters decide at the next election as appropriate. And I'm feeling that we're heading down the path of a, of a repeat of politicizing legal opinions, and I'm trying to head that off, learn from the process, and ensure that we continue to get good advice to be acting in good faith. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Davis. Um, just maybe a um, question through the staff. Um, the Township of Langley Council Legal Orientation Package dated November 23rd, 2018, would that have been the same package in 2014 and 2011? Has it changed? Well, we'd have to go back and check. I think it probably would be updated probably every term given the case law that's occurred during the term. Okay. That's not quite what, kind of what I uh, wanted. Um, uh, hmm. Rephrase it, the question. <laughs> what's that? Nothing. Mark's a lawyer? No, 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 we won't go there. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. That was a call for. Um, I'm, what, I, what I'm concerned about is that um, um, on number one, 
I think I've got that. I got it in 2011. I got. I don't know if I got. Yeah, we got it in 2004. Everybody gets it, and um, it's it's a legal opinion, and um, it can change every time you ask it. I think, and I, every time, and I'm what I'm concerned about is um, maybe sometimes you have to be your own counsel, and if it smells. If it's you just don't do it, just and I know that's really that's a real that's a that's a simple thing to say, but um, we I think we just um, we got we get the we get everybody I believe that runs in a township in the province of BC gets that orientation package, and we're, we're just dealing with number one now, so um, I don't know why it it is inconsistent. It would be inconsistent if you put something in behind it and changed something. So that's, you know, that, anyhow, uh, just some comments. Uh, um, I'm a little confused. Uh, I'm, I'm not really confused, but I, I just think, why would we want to change this? It's, it's uh, on number one here, it's, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, it cover, it's pretty simple, over. Okay. Councilor Woodard? I think I'd clarify too, because I, I think I did mention that, Councillor Davis, that uh, there there is the, some inconsistency between some of the legal opinions and the council orientation, specific to an issue that occurred last term, for which another councillor for addressing it was investigated and censured. So for me, I want to ensure that we are working together to ensure that our legal advice is consistent and accepted and followed. And that if we are receiving an opinion in 2016, which says not to do A, B, and C, that we don't then have another opinion that comes in which is inconsistent with the previous opinions. And I've discussed this a tad with the administration. The administration understands what I'm trying to achieve here. I don't think I need to belabor the point at the council table. This conversation is going to go on for a long time. Um, I think it's, it's appropriate that it continues. We're not going to solve all of this tonight. The motion is written very deliberately to get the legal opinions around some of these issues updated and confirmed and I think reviewed in the context of looking at some alternatives going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Whitmarsh. Thank you. Um, yeah, this, uh, you know, my, my experience on council, uh, I've been on council uh, five years and we've uh, experienced various uh, legal op opinions for all sorts of different questions that have come up. Uh, the issue of conflict is, is, uh, is a, um, complicated one. Uh, there's lots of, as I've discovered, being on council, uh, understandings of what is conflict uh, has become more and more complicated as, as the years go by with my time on council. And, and I do think that uh, one of the things that you start to understand when it comes to the law is that it depends a lot on the questions that are being asked. And uh, the questions that are being asked in some of these different documents are not the same. And so when the questions aren't exactly the same or the situation isn't exactly the same, the legal opinion, therefore, might not be exactly the same. Uh, that doesn't mean that the person is contradicting themselves. It does mean that the question asked is different and they answer the question and they provide the information that we want to, to answer that question. So, you know, I, I, I haven't had difficulties with it. I understand the difference of the questions and appreciate that there's going to be a different response based on the question. I don't think, uh, you know, I do think that our, our, our legal um, opinions that we receive are, are, um, are fair. I think they're balanced. I don't think there's a bias in that opinion. I think they are uh, being really careful about how they look through conflict. And because it is complicated, uh, the answers sometimes are, are complicated uh, in, that, in that process. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I, I think it's important that um, we also recognize that that whether someone is in conflict or not is only actually determined by the courts. It's not actually determined by legal opinion. Legal opinion is just what we receive to guide our thinking and to help us determine whether we might be in conflict or not. Ultimately, each council member has to make a decision on whether they think they're in conflict or not. It's up to them to declare it. And if we want to um, d prove that they're in conflict, it would actually require the courts to demonstrate that and prove it. Um, it's not actually up to a lawyer to say you're in conflict or not. It's just an opinion that they give based on the law, based on the question you ask and based on the law. And law does change, as we know, over time, uh, based on case law. Case law helps us to change the laws depending on how things go. 
And so um, I haven't had any concerns with what's happening, and I don't see the need uh, for us to, to create this as a significant issue. I think that get the opinion. I think they're good opinions, and in the end, you still have to make a decision as a councillor what you're going to do with that opinion. It is not uh, a legal, it's not a judge making that decision, it's just a legal opinion from a lawyer who's very experienced that we use here in the township. So I'm, I'm not uh, supportive of, of uh, some of these uh, motions here today. Thank you, Councillor Long. Yeah, it says in the motion that some of these legal opinions are not complete, or they, they appear to be incomplete. Um, I don't know if they are. Do you think you're really going to get two lawyers to agree what's, what is complete and what isn't, or, or what opinion is? What, that the whole purpose of lawyers is to, is to contest opinions. So I don't think you'll ever get two lawyers in the room to agree to anything. And I don't think we should be counting on, on legal opinions to, to, uh, to dictate how we, how we behave on council. The Local Government Act says you must, you must act in good faith. The motion talks about heavily replying, applying uh, or relying upon legal advice to, to, I guess, to see that that you are acting in good faith. I think if you're doing that, you, you're on the you're on the wrong path right off the gate. I think you take an oath of office, which I've done seven times, and uh, you promise to do your job properly and you, with integrity, with commitment to the community, and in your heart, that's that's where that comes from, and uh, that's where your conflict of interest will come from as well. So I don't think. Any amount of lawyer's opinion is going to change that, or it shouldn't be changing that. I don't think anything untoward has happened, and I, I, I don't think we should be spending another dollar on any, any lawyers to try and give us more opinions. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ferguson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to agree with uh, Councilor Davis, and he said there's some inconsistencies, and uh, he's not really confused. <laughs> But if you read the uh, notice of motion from the top to bottom, you'll you'll see, in, to, with respect to Councillor Woodward, that you know there is some you know inconsistency, and I guess lack of um, uh, I guess information that we need to kind of follow through on and follow up on, and and, and I th I think that you know looking at dates, July eighth. July 19th, you know, September, uh, September 18th, November 23rd, and, you know, and the list goes on and talking about things being complete or not complete. And, um, you know, it just for those reading it, if those have seen it, if you have the agenda in front of you, <laughs> help me out because there's nothing clear about this. Um, uh, anybody that understands something called the theory of induction, when the first thing is true, the second thing is true, and so on down the line, the last thing would indeed be true. So if you looked at some of the things, uh, you know, saying tonight about contracting and then uh, comparing um, uh, incomplete or not complete notice uh, of uh, lawyers' comment and other things, you know, they don't, we don't have the information to be able to make a decision acting in good faith. I mean, for all of us to make a decision based on acting on good faith, it, it would be impossible to vote either in favor or against this because we don't have all the information in front of us. Um, I don't have a problem myself with conflict, and I'll use, I'd like to use examples. The example is I am president of Langley Senior Center, and uh, I'm a volunteer, but I'm still the president. When something came to this table from the Langley Senior Center, I just left the table. I recused myself. I'm not getting any money from I work for, I'm a volunteer, but I recused myself. That was my decision I made, and I think I'm a table officer. It was a, it was a great decision to make. So I don't have a problem with, with recusing myself from, from acting as a volunteer or any other matter. I think it's, 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 it's clear, it's clear in the charter, and I think that getting more uh, legal opinions and, and fighting this out legally with other different lawyers, I don't think that serves the community very well, and it costs. It's costly. We, we need to uh, save our money for uh, roads and sewer and water and other things for the benefit of the community and not chasing around legal opinion. I think we need to move on on this issue. But that's my personal opinion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think I'll just weigh into it now a little bit. Um, uh, this, um, I think this motion speaks for itself. It, 
basically what's behind it, but we won't go into the detail because my colleague didn't. Uh, you know, legal opinions, there's been a, a lot of uh, good comments talked about those, their opinions, and um, members of council, uh, this, this municipality has always given members of council the ability to, uh, to, um, to get a legal opinion when they do find themselves in a position that they, they think they might be in conflict or perceived to be in conflict, and that's been a standard practice this council as long as I've been on it and probably before. Um, and, and that's what they're there. They're, they're there to help inform that member of council. Um, generally, quite often, they already know the answer, but um, we have to be uh, able to ensure that that answer is correct, and uh, therefore we look for uh, some interpretation uh, from someone who's uh, competent in that area. Uh, I did ask for a legal opinion, for, uh, and it was provided November 4th. I want to ensure that um, accusations that were leveled against me and other members of council that I had an opinion that would back up my um, my reasons, and, uh, and and I received one, And but really it's up to me. It's just an opinion. It's not a judgment. It's something that allows me to say, yeah, I guess, I'm, I guess this makes sense, and, and I'm not in conflict, and, and that's what the opinion dated November 4th was all about, and it was to me. It's not, it, it's, it's just me. So why we need to complete it, it served its purpose. And if everybody wants to challenge uh, me on my integrity and, and whether I'm in conflict, that has to be done through the courts. But I'm very confident that there's been no um, no offer of, of promises or no offer of influence for any any campaign donation. That's, that's absolute rubbish. Uh, and B is to expand or amend uh, documents provided to the Mayor and Council. I think that's great. I think uh, that happens every term where staff review and they provide and it's uh, uh, provide the information to Council on a variety of things. And there's so much that we have to learn. What do they, they, they say it's like drinking from a fire hose when you're get a new member on council and all the information you have to take in. I think staff do an excellent job of providing that. But there is still that little bit of common sense that members of council have to have when they interpret all of this. And, uh, and, and that's what they attempt to do. But if we can certainly improve on that, I've got no problem with that. But that'll happen anyway. There's no point in, in, in uh, putting a motion. And number C or letter C is um, now we're going to start. Um, members of council can pick the lawyer they want. Uh, well, when I want a legal opinion, I... I actually talk to my to staff, and um, and they will determine whether or not I should get a legal opinion. It's a corporate lawyer, and uh, I think if I want to, if I don't agree with it, or if I don't want to use that lawyer, then I have the option to to get any lawyer I want in the province of British Columbia and pay for it myself. And that's always been uh, a council's prerogative if they wish to get their own legal advice. And so I think uh, spending uh, residents' money on so we can pick our own lawyer uh, when, when we rely on some very good legal advice that comes from some very good law firms. And the one that provided these is a, is a QC, wrote the community charter, one of the most well-respected um, municipal lawyers in British Columbia, if not in Canada, gives um, uh, seminars and, and, and conferences on these matters all the time, is an expert. I have absolutely no problem with that. But these are just opinions. They're not judgments from a court and to to keep digging digging this you know digging through this uh this uh turf and keep turning it over and turning it over i'm sorry there's nothing there and this is just uh this needs to stop so i'm not going to support any of this thank you any other just any other discussion so i'm going to call a question on a on n4a A is defeated. Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Coons, Mayor Froze, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Long, Councillor Davis opposed. Any discussion on B? I'm going to call the question on B. Again, this is in four. It's defeated. Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Coons, Mayor Froze, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Long, Councillor Davis opposed. And on C, call the question on C. C is defeated. Councilor Ferguson, Councilor Whitmarsh, Councilor Kuntz, Mayor Froze, Councilor Arneson, Councilor Long opposed. Is there any other business? Seeing none, a motion to terminate. Oh, some push the buttons. So, hey, oh, wow, just lit up like a Christmas tree. Councilor Ferguson. Yeah, it's the delegation by uh, Mr. McKinnon. Can I refer that to, to the staff, please? Mr. Mr. Glenn McKinnon. Regarding delegation? The, regarding trees. The, the trees? Trees, yeah, the trees. So, um, Perhaps a little bit of direction for staff. Um, you want to refer it to staff to review 
His, what? His, his, he had all those questions, and I just wondered. His questions were, I think his only ask was that the, the fines be um, reduced or the policy be changed. Uh, so one way or the other, we either make a decision to waive his fines or now, to reduce his fines. He said he had some more things regarding uh, dangerous trees and, and cleanup and things like that, and I'm not sure maybe they can investigate it more. He didn't have a chance to give us complete Okay, so uh, perhaps to refer to staff to inquire if there are any dangerous trees, that those trees uh, not be, um, the fine is not applicable to those trees. three things, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, do you need a motion, Mr. Backen, or direction? Your Worship, we understand it to be that we're to review to determine if the if any dangerous trees exist and they be excluded from the fee structure. It wasn't fines; it was fees to remove the trees. Fee structure, that's right. If that's all it is to do, we can proceed on that basis, which by implication means the remaining fees will be outstanding once we deduct any dangerous trees. But perhaps a motion would be applicable. I think so. If you want to move that, okay. sure, Council Rector. Just before we take a motion, yeah. I, I think we should be referring delegations D one, D three, and D four to staff for investigation oh, okay report. well we better handle one at a time so i think we'll just deal with this one first because it's specific is there a seconder to that council arneson seconds it uh, so on that um any discussion council whitmarsh yeah. no this is mr. on mr mckinnon d3 or the uh, referral uh, referring d3 the uh, yes. mr mckinnon yeah McKinnon. yeah okay so um yeah, I, 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 I certainly appreciate that there may be some trees that are dangerous and some of those elements, but I think when the, you know, I think this is one of the, uh, it's a new uh, example maybe of something that's come up that we didn't maybe anticipate with the tree bylaw. My, the intention, I don't think, of the new tree bylaw was to see how much money we could make in the township. I think the intention was to save trees. So um, I, I think that the idea that there's, you know, such a significant portion, almost $1,700 is suggested in fees, seems quite high. So I know that maybe this requires council to look at the policy again and what we do if there's multiple trees, but I, I do feel that's that's quite high. So I'd like them, I would like to see the motion address more than just a couple of dead trees or dangerous trees, but that maybe they, it deals also with the overall so cost of the friendly, friendly amendment. Well, if you, if you want to amend it. Um, Friendly amendment. To amend the motion to do. I think it should be a motion because this is dealing with a, a bylaw and, and fees. So there's no friendly amendments. We want to deal with this uh, properly. So if you wish to make a, uh, an amendment motion to Councillor Ferguson's motion. Well, can't he add it as a friendly amendment? No. Well, I'm ruling. I'm asking for an amendment and a second. A mover and a seconder on amendment. This is dealing with a bylaw. It's dealing with fees. It okay. Well, I, 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 will, I will make the amendment that uh, in, this, in this case that the the uh, fee for his trees is capped at five hundred dollars. Okay, is there a seconder to that? Second by Councilor Ferguson. Uh, so, yeah. Councilor Richter. Yeah. Well, amendment. I mean, Isn't the tree bylaw does give anybody the right to take a tree out with no cost once a year. Why does he have to take seventeen out at once? Well, that's not what the amendment is, Councilor Davis. Um, maybe the answer to that question is because he's getting older. <laughs> he can't wait to run the time. If years. we if we start <laughs> if we start capping this bylaw tonight, this could be dangerous. Like every uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry. No, that was I don't mean that that way. But everybody that comes as a problem. Tom is that it? Okay, if Glenn. Anyhow, I guess I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off on that foot. But I, I, I understand where we're going. Maybe is there another way we can? But by capping it means anybody. Capping this specific one. It's not any. Yeah, but then we're going to start right. having. Well, just go to council. Just go to council. Just go to council. But that's what this amendment is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks. Council Long. Yeah, I kind of wish we'd had some more discussion before the motion because I agree we can't just be changing it on the fly, especially since it's taken so many years to get that bylaw out there. And, and yes, here we have some unintended consequences, I think, of, uh, or of situations that have popped up. The previous bylaw that we had that was prepared uh, by a certain lawyer <laughs> talked about percentages of trees as well uh, as part of, a, of, a, of an equation. So maybe 
I, I would support a referral to staff to, to report on situations such as this and, uh, and find a solution that suits everybody that has forested lands or trying to improve their, their properties in some respects. So I can't support the $500 cap, because as I think uh, Councilor Davis has said, we'll get people here all the time, we'll become the tree court. But can staff not come back with uh, checking with other jurisdictions? How do you deal with a situation specific to this one so that it can be applied to other properties in the township if need be? So uh, where are we right now, Your Worship, by the way? Well, is this it, is regarding it, a specific delegation. That's what no, this motion this is, this is, is the $500 one. Sorry? We were on an amendment uh, to, to cap the specific delegation's request to $500. That's, that's what this is. If we want to do a change to the, or review the tree bylaw and the, and the fee structure, that's a separate motion for a separate thing. We're dealing with this particular motion. Okay, well, I, I would encourage delegation. us not to support this okay, because this will set a precedent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor. One more thing. That means yeah. if there was 38 trees, it would still be $500, right? No matter how many trees you was taking. On this on. particular, well, well, on the 17, I think it's just on this one okay. application. Okay. Councillor Whitmarsh. Yeah, I don't support my own amendment. <laughs> um, I'm just... <laughs> I, I, I don't support it uh, because of, for the same reasons that the rest of council is. I hesitated to give it, and of course it came out that that's why. So I, I, I think we need to look at the policy itself and make a proper change to the overall policy on multiple trees and how we deal with that as opposed to doing it on the fly. So I don't support my own amendment. Thank you. Councilor Woodward? Well, I hate to say it, I agree with Councilor Long and Councilor Wilmarsh. I mean, I... <laughs> You, know, you always know that you might you probably have the right policy when the three of us agree so um, I would suggest as well that I, I don't I'm uncomfortable with this I actually have some pretty good sympathy for this heavily tree property that's quite large the the current bylaw is kind of intended for smaller lots one or two trees on your lot it's not really written for that situation so uh, we can certainly um, you know to let this person proceed we could certainly do the $500 cap but then we're essentially determining that that's going to be the cap in the bylaw and I think that requires a bit more discussion before we before we go ahead and do that so there might be some middle ground here to let this person or if this person can wait one or two meetings potentially we could we could uh, look at this relatively quickly and come up with uh, with an amendment or, or some direction on this particular person which will also follow through and carry through into the policy at a future date thanks Thank you okay I'm gonna call the question on the amendment uh, in five this is for the amendment. 500 yeah Okay, it fails unanimously. I don't think I've read everybody out. All right, so now we're back to the first motion, uh, which was to review the uh, concern regarding some of the trees that may be dangerous trees and send that back to staff. So I think the speaker's list has gotten messed up. So um, does anybody wish to speak to that? Just, no. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, Councilor Long. Well, just quickly, because we're going to—we're not just looking at the dangerous trees now. We're going to ask staff to look at the policy in. in, in right now, to this. the motion that's that's uh, before us is only regarding this um, delegation, um, and have staff review the trees. If any are dangerous, that the fee would not be applicable to those dangerous trees. That's what this motion is right now. If you want, wish to make a motion after we've dealt with this one regarding the policy, that. Oh, would I'd be like to amend that and say that staff also look at the at the policy in general and, and uh, check with other jurisdictions and try and come up with a. Okay, I think we could handle that as a separate motion. After, then, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, okay, Councilor Davis, do you wish to speak to this? No. Oh, okay. no. Charlie, it's 9 o'clock. Take your pill. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, N5. I'll call the question on, on N5. N5. This, this is on the, the, if there's a disease tree, then the, yeah. Yeah. This is on the, if there's a tree that's uh, dangerous or diseased or whatever. Okay, dangerous tree. Carries unanimously. All right. Um, yeah, so just put, put your, your on the list and we'll get to it. Councilor Richter? Um, yeah, I'd like to refer delegations D1 and D4 to staff. Okay, and follow D1. Up on. And D1, uh, let's deal with them specifically. D1, Mr. Gillis. He wanted an extension in time okay. to take his to stuff out. And D4, uh, there were several questions that were raised okay. about uh, the impact of development in Surrey on the quality of water. In, uh, uh, so, so let's deal with them separately, just so staff have clear direction. I see Mr. Back nodding. So D1, uh, the delegate had asked for some an extension, so to refer uh, him to, to work with staff to find an appropriate amount of time within the near future that he can have this removed. Is that your motion, Council Richter? Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Councillor Arneson. 
Um, any discussion on that? This is on, this is on the uh, D1. Did discussion on that? No. Okay, I'm going to call the question. What do I label that one, Ms. Bauer? N5? Six. And, Six. Six, okay. We didn't push your button. Oh, something's wrong here then. And then I'd also okay, like to refer D4. No, that's right. That's what the motion is. Okay, so it carries unanimously. Okay. okay, so on D, D4, D4. Um, uh, to staff to address the questions that were raised around water quality. Okay, so she had some specific questions uh, other than what we've already dealt with in the afternoon meeting. Is there a seconder to that? Councilor Arneson? A discussion, Councillor Davis. You know, maybe we could just update. Uh, um, we did talk about that, didn't we not? Or we did. So I think just it'll help to update the yeah uh, on what's been happening. Happening. So update yeah. on our discussion. Up today's the progress. Meeting. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll call the question. We we at N seven now. Thank you. Carries unanimously. All right. Uh, Councillor Long, no, that's good. good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Um, motion to. Any other business? Motion to terminate. Oh, no. Have... Councillor Whitmarsh. I just wanted to make the motion about uh, having staff review the tree tree by law. Didn't we do that? No. And make re and make and come back as a recommendation on dealing with multiple trees. The permit fee. Permit fee on multiple trees. To yes. Come back as a recommendation. Okay. So. so, so um, that's significant. Do you want to do that as a notice of motion? Yeah. No, we didn't. But it can be a notice of motion. I'm not. No, Mr. Backwoods. What are you? As it's fresh with the delegation, your worship, okay. it's up to you. But it's uh, we it could do it to be a okay. motion to review the tree by law on the situation of multiple, multiple trees. trees, and then come back with. Okay, I'm fine. Should we move it? Is there a seconder? Yes. yes. Councillor Long seconds discussion. Councillor Richter. I'm opposed to this. We have a, me a review mechanism built in. We're going to go back and look at the bylaw uh, with the help of a community advisory committee uh, next summer. Uh, once the bylaw has been in place for a year, I don't think we should be monkeying with it until we get to that review process. I think this item could be added to the list of what could be reviewed when we get to the review process. Okay, but you, I think this motion just undermines the. Do review you wish process. to refer this to the review process that'll be, occur? And, yes, so, I do. Okay, is there a seconder to the referral, Councillor Davis, on the referral? Uh, discussion on the referral, Councillor Davis. I think referral. it's a. I think it's a good fit. I think that we need to do something, and but it's a good fit because we did. Uh, you refresh my memory. We did have a review. Uh, we wanted to get the tree by by law in, and then we re and this is I think is a perfect fit. Councillor, sorry, Councillor Long. On the do we have such a committee formed then, or a review committee? Was there a review do. process on the bylaw that, that was scheduled? Yeah, worship. When the bylaw was uh, was adopted as part of the process, uh, first off, council did direct staff to take a look and model the city of Richmond's bylaw, which staff did. Uh, and we did, as part of that process, review other municipalities' uh, bylaw structures. And as far as the review is concerned, we did commit to an annual review just to uh, provide council with the, uh, I guess, any issues that may have come up during the, the prior year. Okay, well, that's all very well, but I think that this, this could be more of an issue sooner than later, really, because you've already had one gentleman come up and there may be many others. So I still support the motion to have staff look at this particular aspect of it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Whitmarsh? Yeah, I guess, I mean, I appreciate the review, and I think it'll be really helpful. I guess in this case I'm concerned about this particular delegate, and are, are we going to stay his uh, permit fees until we make a decision by review? So if we're not going to do that, then I would suggest we need to move forward and look at it, uh, the permit fee portion of multiple trees immediately or very soon. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the question on the referral, referring it to the review process. It was it referred your motion. Yeah, you can switch. It. it was a referral of the motion that Councillor Whitmarsh had made to the review process that would occur in summer. That's what we're voting on. And it carries Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Long opposed. 
Is there any other business? Okay, motion to terminate. Termination. Councilor Davis, second. Councilor Long, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Uh, the next thing we'll be doing is we'll be uh, returning to the afternoon meeting, which was adjourned. Uh, we didn't quite complete it. And uh, so we'll go to that right now. And then we'll have a little break. That's Unless, unless you, we're going to the afternoon meeting. Okay, if you want, if you want to take a five minute, we've been at it for two hours. Um, so let's take a five minute break, and then we'll go back to the afternoon meeting. I think that's a good idea. Um, okay, so we're um, we're gonna get back to F six, uh, where we left off. There had been an amendment. Uh, to F6, Community Amenity Contributions Policy. Um, the amendment was carried. So we're back to the main motion as amended. And Councillor Richter was the next speaker on my list. And Councillor Richter, do you wish to speak to the... Well, I thought I did in the other meeting. Oh, okay, that's fine. It's just that you were the next speaker. So is there any... On the amendment. No, the amendment was carried. It was carried. Yeah. Yeah. Correct? So now we're on the main motion as amended. Yeah, so Councillor Woodward. Yeah, I just want to just clarify. So it's been amended to remove the 75% reduction out to March 31st, 2020. So it's community amenity contributions uh, starting for these 22 applications will be a minimum of 50% due and payable of the community amenity contributions, and then it will go up from there. Is that correct? All right, yeah. thank you. Okay, so I'm going to call the question on F6 on the motion as amended. And it carries, Councilor Richter, Councilor Ferguson opposed. Okay, so we're now on to F7. Could I have a motion, please? Could I have a motion? Second. Council Kunst and a seconder. A second. Second. Council Whitmarsh, discussion. Councilor Richter. I'm just wondering, um, why are we extending the deadline? Or did, it, did something go wrong? There was a timing issue with uh, the legislation. Mr. Uh, Mackin? Otherwise, the deadline would have been approximately December 30th or 31st, and we thought that was a bad time to end the period, so we extended it by one week. Okay, thank you. No further discussion, I'll call the question on F7. And it carries unanimously. F8. Uh, moved by Councillor Ferguson. Is there a seconder? Second by Councillor Richter. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on... Oh, does somebody have a question? Councillor Long. Council Long, F8. This is a good thing, but did we have to buy it back, Councilor Richter? No. Through you to the chair? No, the, this is the All the Grove Regional Park, and uh, I guess because the, there's that additional... And all that, but yeah. we didn't have to pay... No, them, there's no cost to the township. Maybe give them the dollar back or something. No, okay. No. There's no cost to the township. Anyway, so this is good. So actually the township has, has expanded by uh, a, few, no. a few acres, right? Actually not. This is still in the city of Abbotsford, um, but I think through a lot of... Uh, Legal gymnastics. Metro Vancouver now controls it, and we and this is necessary uh, part of that legal gymnastics uh, that they will actually maintain it. But it still is in the city of Abbotsford. So it's it's good news it. for park users That's that right. uh, the, the the park will continue the way it's done That's for right. years. Thank but you. They needed to make these agreements because mm -hmm. of all the legal yeah. ramifications. Yeah. Thank you, Council Richter. Yeah, I was just going to say basically what you said that uh, uh, we had to get a order in council. Uh, in order to do this, and that's why we had to give it to them, and then it came back to us. So we're going to run it, even if it is in Abbotsford. We meaning Metro. Yep. Yeah. Metro Vancouver will, will pay the operating costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, I call a question on F8. And it carries it unanimously. Correspondence is one piece of correspondence because of a motion to receive. Council Davis, Council Arneson seconds. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call a question on G1. Carries unanimously. Minutes of committees. Uh, H1 is Heritage Advisory Committee. Could I have a motion to receive? Yeah. Council Davis, second. Councilor Ferguson, seconds. Discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call a question on H1. Carries unanimously. H2 is Heritage Advisory Committee recommended motion. Could I have a motion? Council Long moves it. Seconder. Council Kuntz seconds. And uh, discussion? 
Council Long, do you just want to speak to it? You moved it? Oh, yeah. I think that there are a number of concerns with Bill 52, uh, a whole pile of them. But the concern that the Heritage Commission or Committee has is in terms of um, uh, old farm residences that uh, that may be impacted by this, the, the what they've done, what the ALC have done with that, uh, with, their bio, with their Bill 52. So, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that these old farm, farmhouses are protected and uh, under the bill, it's quite likely that many of them may be destroyed or uh, other decisions made that may affect them. So we want to make sure that that is pointed out to the, to the minister and to the province that uh, that's something that we don't want to see happen in the township. It may affect us more than many communities, but we have a lot of heritage buildings that, that we don't want to see or farmhouses, we don't want to see them torn down because they said that it exceeds so many square feet or whatever they're, the Bill 52 is addressing, so maybe uh, staff will help cra uh, craft a letter that will at least uh, emphasize those concerns. Great. Thank you. Okay, I'll call the question. Call the question on H2. <clears throat> Carries unanimously. And Councillor Woodward, you're up. Yeah, I'd like to move reconsideration, please, on that, as, as outlined here. Second by Councillor Richter. And I'll speak to that. On, dis on consideration, reconsideration, yeah. go ahead. Ms. Bauer, can you bring up picture number one that I sent you? Picture says a thousand words, as they say. Yeah, so this is on the reconsideration. That's on correct. Oh, sorry. You know we're, what? We're we, should, we should wait until reconsideration yeah. so is completed. So, so just on reconsideration motion itself, um, there is a substantial reason. There's a, it doesn't really solve the issue. There's an item we should have debated, and, and I didn't bring it up at the time. The, the problem is not solved, so I'd like to reconsider it. And if reconsideration fails, it's just going to come back as a notice of motion. So just yeah. pl okay. please, please reconsider it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm, I'm going to say no to the reconsideration, but I, I understand there's a process and amendment, an amendment to the... Uh, uh, so I'm just going to ask you an amendment to the policy, would it solve the same purpose? It would, but I think the reconsideration gets uh, reconsideration gets the original motion back on the floor much easier than a notice of motion to move forward. So we've made an amendment that doesn't work, in my opinion. So I'd like to get the motion back on the floor and amend it, and then either vote it up or down, as because I don't want the, the way it's done now doesn't actually solve the problem. So there's no sense leaving the amendment there. That's why I'm moving reconsideration. Okay. Okay, Councilor Whitmarsh, on the reconsideration. Yeah, just, uh, um, I guess I, I'm trying to uh, get my head around whether, like, this is, is this a problem for all uh, properties and driveways, or is this a... Does it's on the reconsideration, so... Yeah, I know. Yeah. It is on that. Okay. But that's, it's hard to know whether to reconsider yeah. unless okay. this is specific to one home, or, spe or this is the general, it doesn't work in Langley. That's, and I, I just don't know the answer to that. That's why it's hard to know. Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, thank you for that. So I, I think my reason is, is I prefer the notice of motion. We have more information to, to work on when, we, when we're going to look at a policy amendment rather than just we don't know why we're reconsidering it. So, and I understand what you're doing. I think it just would like to use the other process. So, notice, so. so you would, put me on, I won't speak to you again. You, you would prefer a notice of motion to undo the previous notice of motion essentially rather than no, just. No, no, there's a policy in place. So if there's an amendment to the policy, that could be done through motion and we have the information in front of It'll us. It'll be hard to craft it as a notice of motion. Okay, okay. okay. so I'm going to... Because you're, you're on the verge of ruling this out of order, I believe. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? Okay. No. I thought that's no, no. where you were going. No, no, no. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying how I'm going to vote on it. Right. I, I just I prefer to see all the information. Okay, I'm going to call the question on reconsideration. Okay, and reconsideration. What happened? Uh, carries with uh, Councillor Kunst, Mayor Froze, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Long opposed. So now we're down to the, the motion, uh, which is the, uh, so the policy is back on the table. So Councillor Woodward. So to clarify, with the, the, so the, Ms. Bauer, can you just clarify for myself and Council? So we have the main motion as amended, black on the floor. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, yeah. so that's just clear for Council. It's the amended version, which is highlighted in the report. So this photo here, the, the issues, I'm going to be moving an amendment to uh, remove the 3.16.1, which is the 1.5 meter setback. So you can see this is the particular house that actually started the issue to begin with. 
that the setbacks, which I missed in the original um, amendment that was proposed, is the way I would define it, and of course staff can correct us, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, setbacks are for structures, not for surface treatment. And at least that's how I have understood it. Now that can be corrected potentially right now. But the idea here is that widening in the other direction didn't satisfy this, and it won't satisfy it in, in a lot of other cases. So in this particular case, we have a sidewalk leading to the rear of the house, which is right up against the property line. There is no setback for that surface treatment. And in my opinion, a very reasonable, minor driveway widening this individual uh, is trying to attempt and applies to many other individuals isn't possible with the way it's worded right now. So Ms. Bauer, if you could bring up uh, photo number two. It's one of the reasons I want to work on this and so I've spent, actually spent more time on this than I have in trying to widen 208 so far. Um, this particular house, it took me less than 30 seconds, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, less than 30 seconds to find this example in this person's neighborhood where the widening has occurred right up to the property line anyway, and I don't see a significant crisis here. So the individual neighbor can hedge, they can fence, the, there's a, you, know, you can do a lot of things on your property and you can build a fence there, but for some reason we're where we still have in this policy the 1.5 meter setback. So reconsideration, I would like to have council consider so, that, and I would like to make an amendment to remove so, so that and have amendment. that succeed or yeah. fail. So I'll so. move an amendment to remove 3.16.1, which is in regards to the setback for the <coughs> surface treatment. Thank you very much. A seconder to that? Second by Councillor Richter. So I have a question for staff. Um, so now that I understand this, so basically uh, this would allow parking uh, right up to the park the property line, does that occur in any other zone? Is that something that we do? Or is there a reason that we have a bit of a setback for parking so it doesn't go right up to a property line? Um, Mr. Safi? Your Worship, the driveway typically aligns with the garage. Uh, Councillor Woodward was correct earlier in that the setback requirements typically do not apply to anything other than, than buildings and structures. Uh, and to go beyond that, I guess, I would suggest that there are many other reasons for, for the setback, uh, in particular with reference to driveway locations or driveway expansions, uh, those being, for example, some of the factors that were referenced in the, uh, the discussion and the staff report previously when the policy was amended that include such things as infiltration, uh, rainwater management, and on-street parking. And as you can see on this picture, there's a no parking sign because I assume uh, there's been some, some issues there with parking. So just things to consider, and uh, I guess not having had the benefit of... of uh, of, I guess, the, the rationale behind this. I, I can't comment anything beyond that and just simply leave it at that. So if I can yeah, go ahead. add one more thing and then I'll let others speak. So the rationale for this, bringing this forward this way, is that now we can, I, we can address and debate this specific amendment rather than going through a notice of motion process. So I appreciate that. And then that will be a decision for council, fully aware that if this setback issue of 1.5, they'll have to widen in the other direction, which in this person's case, it won't be possible in each person's case. And it will, in some cases, not solve the problem. And I generally will defer to private property that if you're trying to widen your driveway for the purposes of another vehicle, in this case for a grandson, that uh, I generally support it and, and, and feel that people should be allowed to do this given that other surface treatments up to the property line are acceptable and people are, are doing it anyway outside of the permit process. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Long? Well, uh, I'm pretty confused and I think this is because we try and do the right thing and I, and I see Councilor Woodward spend a lot of time on this, but uh, there's got to be a reason why these things exist. So. It's all very well that you see something that you think maybe should be corrected, and uh, we all do that on council. That's what we're here for. But I would like to hear from staff and get an explanation as to what the ramifications are of this. So could we refer this to staff to come back with a report or a presentation so we can deal with this once and for all? Because there could be another unintended consequence if we, if we strike this piece out. I'm not sure. But I'm not an expert on it. But I, I know that there must be a reason. So let's refer it. Move, referrals moved by Councillor Long, second by Councillor Ferguson. And um, yeah, I think, and, and again, that just goes back to my point of just getting a, the full information, and it may be perfectly fine, but uh, I know um, Mr. Seffi didn't have all the answers, and we'll just get back a little bit of uh, 
information from staff on this. So any other discussion or referral? Saying none, I'll call a question. Carries Council Woodward, Council Arneson opposed. All right, uh, is there any other business? Councilor Richter. Uh, yes, um, in the items distributed today, item number nine with regards to um, speeding uh, in Fort Langley on 88th, I'm wondering if um, uh, the gentleman that's written the letter is asking for speed bumps, but I, I don't know if those are appropriate in this area or if we should be just asking for increased uh, uh, police uh, monitoring. So I'd like to refer that to yeah. staff. It's been referred to um, engineering and the RCMP uh, already. So uh, thank you for that. So Mr. Backen, just confirm. All right. Thank you. Um, the items distributed on November 14th, um, item number nine on page 33, the Olympian Swim Club, will they be consulted on the future pool shutdowns? Mr. Mackin, center shut down. So I understand this has been forwarded to engineering division. Um, can we also forward this to the uh, recreation, recreation department? Your Worship, uh, perhaps while Mr. Mackin is looking into Lovely. it, I can advise that we will uh, we will uh, try and and communicate that we have been communicating that with the public uh, through through I guess uh, social media and and uh, the print media posting, but specifically to. Uh, advise one particular user group certainly we can we can do that thank you um, item number t 10 on page 34 I just had a question why is Township of Langley cleaning sanitary mains in the city this, this is, is uh, Thursday November, November 14th. 14th so this is number 10 on page 34 the book I mean, do they compensate us for it? I think that belongs to us. 200 Street and from Langley Bypass to 62 Avenue. Your Worship, there yes. are. That is ours, yeah. Is that in the township? Yes. It there, is. And, and there are, that, that's correct, Your Worship, and there are uh, regional pipes that serve the township of Langley that also go through other municipalities that, that we contribute uh, maintenance costs to the, the region for. Also, oh, so within the city language. Yeah. <laughs> okay, item 11 on page 35. I wanted to thank staff very much for this report, and I'm very happy to see that uh, lead concentrations are below the Health uh, Canada uh, concentrations. So I was wondering if we could publish this on the township uh, page and on the township website, this report, so that. Sure. The Mr. public Martin. that has expressed concerns over lead and water can be reassured. Uh, number 12 on page 36. Um, I'm wondering if this report can be sent to uh, the area resident, Norma Goulet, I think her name is, uh, who had expressed concerns about that roundabout. Okay. Mr. Backen, yep. thank you. And number 14 on page 40 is about Zentera. Um, which one? Zentera. Zentera? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I was wondering if this could uh, go on the township website too. And how long will the 1.1 meter uh, take to be widened to the 1.5 meters? So the, the the sidewalk there is smaller than it should be. Okay. Why would, sorry, just, just help me. Why would we put this on the web page? This has been a topic of great debate and discussion in uh, in Murrayville. It's been on the Murrayville uh, Residents Association page, or whatever it is. Okay, anything else? For me, thank you. Okay, motion to terminate. terminate. Councillor Davis, seconder. Councillor Kuntz, all those in favor, opposed carried. We now um, move into the public hearing. We'll just give a few.